Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all doing well. Today I have a massive DIY craft TV episode for you. This is for summer, so it's going to be a compilation of lots of my ideas in one video for you to enjoy and get inspired. So we're gonna start crafting. I'm gonna begin with this beautiful trinket dish here. And it is lovely and iridescent, but I kind of need it matte, so I'm gonna Go ahead and I'm going to paint it with my white acrylic paint. So here's my seashell painted. I'm going to dry it using my hot air gun. Now I'm going to add a little bit of decoupage to the dish. So you're going to take your napkin, open it up, get rid of all of the inner layers. If you're doing decoupage, I suggest that you look for a napkin with a white background because that's always easier to work with and it just molds into your object, whatever you're using, a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the bits I want from the design, just using my fingers to gently rip around the area. Get rid of all of the excess and I don't suggest cutting just use your fingers like this. Just to a rough design of where I'd like to place all of my little decoupage bits. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on getting as many little pieces off my napkin and the design as I can and just see how many I want and then we'll go ahead and stick them down. Once you have your design ready, you can go ahead and take your Mod Podge and I always use glass or matte. This time I'm going to be using this glass one here. And you can use PVA. <laughs> yeah, you can use PVA but it's quite thick so make sure that you water it down. But I do suggest using Mod Podge, it is the best for decoupage. So when you do this process, it's quite magical and really therapeutic. You'll just see that it really just melts into the background. So we'll start with the centerpiece here and you want to go really light with the glue. You don't want much at all because it's really thin and fragile as well. And you're going to cover the whole design on the back and then you can go over it as well on the front. Then you're going to flip your design over, just center it back where you like, be really careful. My fingers stuck to it there. And then you're going to take, just like I've bunched this up, it's a ball of cling film and dab it down. This will help get rid of the wrinkles in your design as well. Let's go ahead and glue the rest of the pieces down. I think it's easier doing it this way, so just on the object itself rather than the napkin. That's much easier. And then I'll go over all of them with the Mud Podge again. You can also add varnish, you don't have to use Mod Podge to go over it. And if you're using glass, I recommend going over the whole plate. Otherwise, you're just going to see like the areas where you've done the decoupage be all shiny and the rest will be matte. So I'll just go and go over it all with my paintbrush. Now I'm going to take this seahorse that I have already given him a makeover, it was a thrift find. He was used in a previous project and I'm going to stick him down with my hot glue just right here. Before I do that I do want to add a little bit of detail around the dish itself. So to do that I'm going to be taking this metallic marker, it's gold, and I'm going to go over just the edges with the pen. So this is how it looks at the moment. Now I'm going to be taking two 
starfish I've got a big one and then a medium size and then we're gonna take the seahorse and I'm actually gonna paint them gold to match the rim of the plate I'm using my sponge brush to apply the paint I always find that it's easier it gets into the grooves you can just work with it a lot more than a regular paintbrush the seahorse has been painted now I just need to paint the starfish Now let's try these, speed up the process again with my heat gun. I'm just going to take my hot glue and stick these two starfish down. I just went over the whole dish of the design with a little bit of white acrylic paint, just um, dry brushed it really. And that's because I wanted the seahorse and the stars to stand out as well as the edge on the seashell. So if you want to do that, you just make sure that you've got a little bit of paint. I've got rid of the excess, as you can see, on the bottle itself. And you just go over it like this. Really, really lightly. So here's the final project and I am so happy with it. I think it looks so high end. I really do believe that it would be quite expensive if you found it in a shop. Second project, I'm going to be using the same trinket dish, but just another one, as well as this thrift find. And we're going to glue that right there like that. So make sure that you find the center. To decorate this one, I'm going to be using some Arteza pouring acrylic colors. So I'm going to start with some dark blue, this is actually a shade of green and then I'm taking another shade just pouring that on top and then we're going to go with a blue lastly you're going to take a shade of white and just place that inside as well. I'm just going to swirl it around a little bit. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And then the fun part, we're going to start pouring. Just swirling it around the entire shell get the beautiful marbling and then once you're done swirling the paint around and covering your object you can just get rid of the excess paint into a cup I'm using the disposable one that you can see then once you leave it to dry this is the amazing result that you will get it reminds me of resin so resin pores and this is a lot easier than using resin it's just got such a beautiful finish i really really love the marbling and i just think this looks really high end and i'm so happy with how it came out for the final project again i'm going to be taking a thrift find and i'm going to turn this into a little miniature wreath i'm going to take this embroidery hoop and we're going to stick it like this with our hot glue or any glue that you want to use I'm going to be using some bar sponge to decorate the bottom and to hide this part. Again, I'm going to just take my glue to stick that down. Now we're going to take some reindeer moss to decorate as well. So I'm using two colours here. And I'm just really having a look at what else I can stick down. I've got this lovely collection of shells. And I get a lot of these as gifts, so they're coming in handy now for these summer crafts. I think that looks perfect there, so I'm going to just stick that down. And then I've got this lovely tiny miniature bottle full of blue glitter. And I think that's going to look lovely there. Now I'm taking some neutral coloured moss and I'm going to place that just under here gonna place the starfish on top 
just to give it a pop of colour and bring this back to the focus. I think this would look really nice here. Let's add a little bit more moss on the side. I don't want too much of that sponge showing. I'm going to take a small amount of driftwood just to place right here. I think we should stick a shell on so let's grab one. I'm going to finish the piece off by taking this pearl garland and sticking a small amount in the corner. So this is the final project from today. I really do love all of them so I'm having a really hard time choosing but let me know what you think in the comments. I did add some glass mod podge to the dolphins. It just makes it look more realistic like they're underwater. So I'm going to be using this deep shadow box and that's what you're going to be needing, one of these deep frames. And we're going to turn it around. You can print a background on you know, some card or some paper. Just get any image that you you know want to use and you can go with any theme or style. I'm going to be using this one here from this pad so I'm going to get the backing off and then we're going to cut this, measure it to size and cut it so that it fits inside. And I'm actually just going to use the paper that comes with it. You're going to place it on top just to know how much you need to cut and we're going to grab our pencil just make an outline get your scissors and we're going to cut this out nice and quick I thought this was card but it's actually paper so Need to be careful it's not as strong as I thought. Then you want to grab some glue stick. This one's a little bit dried out so I need to kind of go over it a little bit harder than usual. And then place it on top and get it in place. And let's just press that down. I'm actually going to go over this because it's not that shiny, like it's too matte for me. So I'm going to go over it with some glass mud podge. The other thing I might do is sprinkle a little bit of white glitter while the mud podge is still on there. And here's my bag of glitter. I'm just going to take a little bit and sprinkle it to the top. Actually, let's just do that all around because this actually looks so nice. And then it's totally up to you if you want to place your glass back on there. I'm going to have it without it because I just prefer it that way. So then you're going to take it, place it back inside. And then close these little clips. And now we're ready to work on the inside, which is a really fun bit. You're going to need some reindeer moss. So I've got a few colours here and I think I'm going to mainly be using the neutral colour. So take your hot glue and just place it on top of the background and in the frame on the sides. And then you're going to stick your moss down. Let's go with a darker green now and a bit of lighter green. I'm also going to use some of this which is called curly moss. It's amazing how many different types of moss you can get and I think I'm going to add that right there. Now you want to grab some shells, you can see my lovely collection here. I've also got some starfish and some really small shells. And we're going to be decorating like the bottom 
with the shells so I'm taking some smaller ones so I've chosen small shells because I'm using a small frame otherwise you can go with the standard big ones like I've got some really huge ones but they just won't fit in there thankfully I've grabbed these really small ones which is perfect now for the main focus I'm going to be using this mould it's a mermaid tail as you can see I got this from Zadil and I'm going to be using these pastels so you can use eye eyeshadow you basically just want powder to color it you can have it clear of course and then paint it if you'd like but I'm just going to add a little color to the mold just like this you can also use mica powder mica powder and that's going to come through on the mold and you can use resin in your mold you can use clay, I'm just going to use my hot glue because that's the quickest and the cheapest that really looks lovely already and this is going to help the detail come out on the mould as well so we're going to really be able to see this just going over the edges of the mould as well in case it picks it up I'm not sure if it will okay I think we're ready to put our hot glue in make sure you've got enough so I've got another glue stick ready and you want it nice and hot like really nice so it's easy just to kind of put inside your mould like this starting to work my way up Okay, I think that we're done filling that, so I'm going to let this set. It's not going to take too long to set, I'm probably just going to give it two minutes. While that's set, I'm going to have a look at what space I've got to play a sea starfish. I think that's completely fine there, so just attaching my hot glue to it. I'm going to take a smaller starfish and I've run out of hot glue. I'm going to place him just above the other starfish there. I think the mould is ready now, you can see I touched it when it wasn't fully set. So yeah, you need to be patient with these. Let's get it out of the mould, have a look at what it looks like. So this is how it looks. And I think I'm going to just neaten this up with some scissors. I'm taking my glass mud podge to go over it just to give it that gloss again and we will wait for this to dry clear while we're waiting for the mermaid to dry I'm going to take this which was actually part of I think a bracelet or something it's got a little bit of purple to it and it's a glass like marble almost I'm going to stick that there so we have our tail finally nice and dry so I'm going to add hot glue to the hot glue and we're going to stick her down right in the middle as so she's inside the sea just diving I've just added this bit off camera using these jewels they're usually like in the wedding sections so I've added three going from bigger to smaller now I'm going to add some stamps I think I'm going to go for this one here and I'm going to have it coming right here I'm using my black ink you can use whatever color you want just pressing that down I'm going to do one tiny section right here I'm draping this over the frame I don't know where I got this from I had it from school years many many years ago and I'm gonna glue this on with my hot glue as usual don't want to add too much glue because it will come through the netting now I'm gonna cut off all of the excess And 
and then I'm going to neaten these down and just carry on sticking it down. Now I'm taking this chalk craft pen, you can just use any white marker and I'm going to just go over the edges here, the border, it doesn't have to be neat. Now to finish off, I've printed a little quote off the internet and I've got some card here just because I can't print onto card. We're going to stick this down and I've printed it multiple times just to see what size I want and I'm going to go with this one here. So grab your glue stick, turn this around. I'm just going to make sure that's covered entirely. And then you're going to glue it onto your card. Then we're going to cut this out. And you can choose to have yours the entire sentence, but I'm going to have each word. So I'm going to cut this like this as well. Now I'm going to go over these with some tape. It's kind of like we've laminated it, it just makes the colours pop as well. So I'm cutting the sellotape to size according to the paper. This is our final bit for the project. You're going to take these sticky foam pads and they give it an added dimension to it because it raises it up. You're going to need to cut them to size for some of them, so I'm just grabbing my scissors again to cut the excess there. So kind of go and have a look at how you want to arrange it. Make sure that you've got enough space so you know where to stick everything. And I'm happy, it's really sticky by the way, those foam pads. I'm happy where this is, so I'm going to go ahead and stick it down. And take my other foam pad, you can see how flat that is in comparison. To the one where we've used the sticky foam pad on. And here's a completed project. What do you guys think? I really like it. I think I haven't made something like this for a while. I really do like miniature worlds and dioramas. So I'm going to be starting off with this thrift find. This is the lid. It came with this and I really loved it. I just love the colour but even though I do like the colour, I think for this project it's a little bit too dark so I'm going to be taking this tester pot and this sponge brush. I always find that sponge brushes apply paint on shiny smooth surfaces a lot better so that's why I'm going with this. Now I'm actually going to leave it a little bit blotchy like this. I do like that some of the blue still comes through but I just wanted to give it a little bit of yellow and just take away from the harshness of the blue before. So we're also going to do the top and the sides. I'm going to use my hot air gun just to make the process a little bit faster drying the paint. The next thing you're going to need is a giant bauble. This is half of one and that's all you're going to need. You can remove this little bit here using your pliers or you can melt it off. If you are using pliers like me, it is fairly simple. Just try to make sure that you don't crack the rest of the bauble. And you can sand off any extra bits that haven't come off or go in again with the pliers. Once you have your ball dry, whatever you're using, and your ball, we're going to take some sand, and I always really, really love using this light coloured sand, but you can use a typical kids playing sand, it is cheaper. I'm going to fill it up. Now is a really fun part, you're going to start putting your arrangement in wherever you like. I'm going to be starting off with this which is actually an Easter tree and I've always looked at it and thought it looked like coral so finally I'm going to be able to use it. I'm going to take my scissors and just snip some bits off that I think um, just to see how much will fit inside really and how much I want. 
ignore the mess I have tried a few things off camera but I'm going to be taking some shells now I've got a starfish and one shell there already and I'm just going to carry on now it's just really arranging having a look to see what fits what looks right moving things around so I'm using old jewellery as well this was a pearl bracelet from the thrift store and you can see that they come in really really handy it's so beautiful so I've got a mixture here of some reindeer moss in three different colours the rest are all just shells, starfish, this is a bath sponge I'm going to break off a little bit of this driftwood to add inside as well I'm finishing off by sprinkling a little bit of these you know they're usually like in the wedding section just the little gems and I think that that just really you know ensures that any of the space where you can't really fit anything else in but it looks a little bit bare this really does the trick and it just adds a little bit of sparkle I have purposely left the inside of the bowl um, blue and that's because I kind of want it to look like the bottom of the ocean and then when you come to adding your bauble on top you can apply glue but I'm going to leave it like this just so I can reuse the bauble and reuse all of these bits inside if I want to for another project. I'm going to finish up just by stamping C on the side so I've got my stamps ready and my ink So here's our first thrift makeover and I'm really loving it. I'm so glad I painted over the blue outside anyway because it was a little bit too dark and I think that it was nice just seeing some of the blue still come through. For the next project again I'm going to be taking a thrift find. So I've got this bottle. I'm just going to get rid of as much string as I can. So I managed to get the whole thing out except a bead which I love. And I'm going to be taking some driftwood. This is two little pieces I'm going to stick together to make a boat. This is going to be a miniature boat that goes inside our bottle. Next you're going to take a stick and I've measured its size to make sure that it fits inside my glass. Taking some hot glue, we're going to add it to our little boat. One final touch to finish the boat off. This was off some chocolates. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick that on, applying some hot glue on the top and the bottom. Now I'm excited for this. I'm taking my hot glue and I've got a blue glue stick as you can see there. We're going to make some fake water. So you're just going to get your hot glue really nice and hot. Kind of just looks like a melted crayon. I'm going to place my boat inside while it's hot. On top of our hot glue. So I'm bringing my hot glue all the way to the front. And we're also going to make sure that we do the sides and you can kind of move your hot glue like this to just create like some movement in the hot glue so I need to get in on that side there just have a look at how it looks through the glass bottle and then just carry on making amendments I've got a pack of these miniature people I got them on eBay, Amazon also do them and they come from China so they're really cheap and I'm going to add him to the boat I think that's just going to look amazing. Look at how awesome that looks just to finish it off. So here's our miniature scene in a bottle. I've actually wanted to make this project for the longest time. I think next time I'm actually going to be trying to use epoxy resin as a fake water. So I'm excited to try that. So for our third and final project, I'm going to be taking another thrift find. We're going to help this seahorse look a lot better, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> We're going to be starting with two tumble towel blocks. I'm going to glue them together and then I'm going to start giving him a makeover. So just taking... <laughs> whoops. Just taking my hot glue. You can see it's still got a little bit of blue from my last project. Just stick those two together. And any hot glue that comes out, I just like to remove it like this. 
I'm going to start by painting the seahorse. I'm using that same colour that I used in the first project and the same brush. Making sure I'm getting the sides as well and the bottoms. I'm going to dry the first coat. I think I'm going to need several. This is my second coat now and I think I should be done once this is dry. Now I'm going to be taking some makeup and I tend to do this when I want to add a little subtle colour and I don't want to really paint it. This just gives it a little bit of something without being too much. So I'm going to go in with a kind of a brown and I'm going to just go over these ridges to add definition. Now I'm done, I'm going to add some hot glue and stick him in the middle. Now I'm going to start decorating around the seahorse. So I'm adding my hot glue and I'm going to start with some moss. I'm taking the brighter shade of reindeer moss. I'm going to stick a starfish in the corner I'm bringing back the coral and we're going to stick that right on the end of our tumble tower block and then finishing off with a tiny super cute shell here And this is our final project for today. I think this one and maybe the first project are my favourite. I'm having a little bit of a hard time. Let me know what you think and I hope that you have enjoyed watching. So today I'm going to be giving a makeover to three thrift finds. So the first one I have painted it off camera already. This is a salt pig and it was white. So I'll leave the photo of what it looked like here. I've painted it bronze, I've given it two coats of paint here and I am going to be transforming this into like a bee skep, a beehive. So that's what I'm going with, it's kind of like a diorama. And the second thing that I want to do is to be taking some of this packaging. So we're going to also be doing trash to treasure here. So I thought that this really looked like honeycombs when you stretch it out and that's why I saved it and finally we're going to get to use it for today's project. One of the things I want to do first for the inside, you can paint it but I think that's going to be a little bit difficult unless you're going to be using spray paint. So I'm just going to take some of this, it's kind of like um, tissue paper but it's not organza maybe. So I'm going to just rip it, does it have to be neat? And I'm going to scrunch it up a little and I'm just going to place it inside. Just making sure that I cover any white areas because when we look in we don't want to see any of the white. You can also do this like in an orange colour to kind of represent the honey. And you can stick that in place but I'm just going to leave mine like this. Next you kind of want to measure out how much you want from this packaging. So then you're going to cut it and we're going to stick it inside. It is going to be a little bit tricky. I didn't want it outside like this. I kind of want it to be inside. So I'm just roughly cutting around it. And you want it a little bit bigger than the actual entrance because we need something to stick it by. And then I think I could kind of do the rest without holding that. Let's set that aside and just get these holes opened a little bit better. When you're doing this just make sure you don't pull it too hard because you don't want to break it or to rip it rather. You kind of want all of the holes there otherwise it won't look that realistic. 
So I was just sitting here thinking that the adhesive is a little bit tricky because we're going to be working with the inside and also you have to kind of make sure it's really nice and taut for it to have the effect of the honeycombs. So I thought with the hot glue it's just going to burn me, it's just going to be getting cold and you know I'm going to have to work under time pressure. So what I'm actually going to do is use double sided tape. So here's my tape, I'm just going to rip a little and I'm going to add it to the sides and you just want to do that all around take the backing off that's one done so as you can see I've got all my tape here now and this is going to be the trickiest part of this project. Trying to get this in, stick it inside and making sure it's really nice and taut. So I think I'm about done now and I am going to add some rope right on the entrance like this. So we're going to glue that all around using our hot glue and just cut its size. So just snipping off the excess here and then we'll just stick that down. So off camera I just took some acrylic paint, this is yellow, and then I also took a gold and I mixed it up to get a really nice honey colour. I then applied the honey inside here just to make it look more like honeycombs. So as you can see I've got some lines that I've drawn here and that's just with some soft pastels. I've got three colours here and I just want to give it some definition and just make it look more like a beehive or a bee skep. So I'm going to carry on drawing around. I've got one half done so I kind of just need to match where I've drawn those lines here. And then I'm going to connect them at the back as well. And this doesn't have to be really neat because you're kind of going to blend it in anyway. I'm going in with my second one here. And then take your yellow, kind of add that in the middle. Looks like a right mess right now, but it's going to blend in nicely. And then the fun part. Start blending in. Now I'm going to be taking my hot glue and this has like a honey coloured glue stick if you can see there and I'm going to start drizzling that right here at the entrance. And I'm going to try to bring it down a little as well, so it actually looks like it's stripping. Another alternative is just to use normal hot glue and then just paint it into a nice honey colour. I've also put some in the jar itself and then I'm going over the honeycomb a little, just to kind of make it look more realistic here. So it really will look like a honeycomb kind of gives it like that wet look. Be very careful though when you do this because obviously it's like paper, packaging paper. And I'm going to finish off by sticking the B as the final touch. This is actually a brooch. Um, I'm going to just stick him here with some hot glue and then I think we're done with this project. Just to finish off I'm going to add a little bit of greenery and I was really debating whether I should do this or not but because I have two other projects in mind I just really wanted to 
kind of fit in so that's why I went with adding it in the end. So I'm taking these leaves and I'm also going to add this purple flower, pink and lilac, right there. And I'm just going to do that with hot glue and then we're done. So just to remind you, we went from this to this. I really think this is so cute and it's really, really unique. You all know me by now. I'm sure you can guess that this is something that I have made. And if you're new to my channel, I really love making unique things that are kind of whimsy as well. And we hit two birds with one stone here. We did a thrift flip or a thrift makeover and a trash to treasure project. So we're moving on to the second project now. And these are my thrift vines. So what do you think we'll create? With these, I've got a teacup, I've got a saucer, well you can actually know from the thumbnail, and I've got a sweets jar, and we're going to turn this into a teacup gnome. The first thing you're going to do is stick your sweets jar, and you don't have to use a jar like this, I'm just simply using all I've got, but you want something that you can use as the body of the gnome. And then you're going to take some hot glue and you're not going to stick it right in the centre. You want to stick it a little bit further away and that's because we're going to have some feet for the gnome. So I'm going to take my glue, right, I'm going to add it on the bottom here. I've still got the honey colour from the first project. Some of the glue is still coming through. And you can secure the sound with E6000 as well or some super glue. The next thing you want to do is take your teacup and place it on top. So if you are using a jar, you want to make sure that the teacup can actually go on there nicely. You also want to find something that isn't too short, isn't too long, isn't too wide. Because you have to remember this is actually the body of the gnome. So just imagine that. I know it's just a jar at the moment. Let's have a look at where we need the glue to go on the outer sides of this jar, I think. It should be enough. I'm going to stick that right on, hold it for a while. For the gnome's feet, or shoes rather, I'm taking some tiny dog shoes. Now you can find key rings on Amazon, like shoe key rings, and those work perfectly. They're better than these. And I'm just going to remove this. So I'm going to grab my scissors and cut this off just so it's easy to work with. And obviously we don't need these on there either. So I'm grabbing my gold acrylic paint. I'm just going to Go and paint these. So I'm going to go ahead and just do both of these and then we'll move on to the next stage. My little boots have dried and I've also placed them where I will think I would like them. And because I've done that, I'm just making sure that I hold it down. I'm taking my hot glue just to glue them down. So when it comes to making the beard, make sure that you cut the beard the way that the fluff or the fur is going down because if you stick it on like that this is actually going up so I'm going to kind of measure roughly how much I want to cut and then I'm just going to cut a small triangle and we're going to stick it on to the jar. So now I need to just trim my beard to size downwards into a triangle. I'm happy with how long it is here on the sides but I just need to tidy him up a little. So when you're happy, go ahead and stick that down. And for the nose, you can take anything you like. You can even make it out of plasticine or polymer clay. This is a bead. I always use the beads. And I'm going to stick that down right here under the cup. I wish I didn't have the ones with holes in, but that's the only ones that I've got right now. How cute is he looking so far? Now I'm going to add a flower. I was thinking this one, but my hobby decided 
but this one actually looks better so I'll go with his opinion even though I think it's this one that looks better. <laughs> I think our little gnome needs some arms. This is optional, you don't have to do it, but yeah, I just felt like he is missing them. So I've got some material here. This is actually just a scarf. I also have some pipe cleaners, and this is how I'm going to make his hands. So you're going to have two pipe cleaners, and I have just folded it like this in half, and then once again, and then just twist them at the ends so it doesn't open up. This is also going to ensure that your arms can actually be moved because it's all wired. Then take your material, mine's really bright and yellow just to match the sunflower and we're going to wrap it around. Make sure you can't see the pipe cleaner so you might have to do this several times until you're happy and then I'm just going to take my hot glue, be careful with your fingers. Secure that and then we'll cut that. So this is one arm done almost. I'm going to add a little bead as his hand. So taking my glue again, I'm just going to put that through. Okay, let's move on to making the next one. Same process obviously. So there we have it, two little arms made. Now we're going to attach it onto the sides of our jar. We're going to apply a touch of colour to his nose and the way that I like to do this is by taking some old makeup and just gently brushing it on his nose. So you can do noses, different colours, you don't have to go the wooden bead alone. This just adds a little subtle colour, giving him a kind of a brown, bronzy nose to match the shoes as well. And I'm going to add two little dots or three using my dotting tool and some paint. You don't need much at all, this is the side that I'm going to use. So I'm just stabbing it here. Now I'm going to start decorating around the saucer a little. To do that I'm going to be taking some moss and I'm going to just take my hot glue, add quite a good amount there. We're just going to place some moss in the corner. And I'm going to add more hot glue on top of the moss and a little on his arm because I'm going to be adding two flowers on there. I'm taking this arrangement that I put together in a previous project and I'm also going to stick that on the side. I suddenly had this idea come to me and I just think it's so adorable that I have to do it. I'm going to use this part of the teacup as though it's a bird bath. So I'm going to be applying some UV resin to it and then I'm going to cure it. So I've got some pigment there. This is blue powdered pigment. And then I'm taking my resin. Oh, whoops. Wrong thing there. And I'm going to mix that in to create water. Got my toothpick. It's a nice little technique here if you haven't seen this before. Let's mix that in. And then let's take these two chicks, so let's just plop him inside, and this one, and then we're going to cure it, and this is UV light. And you're just going to place your UV light on top of your resin for around two to three minutes. Look at what I'm doing, I'm using the arm. 
to hold it while I can clean the table as it cures. So this is nice and cure now. As you can see it's not tacky, it's all dried solid. And then I'm going to be taking this paper plate. I have just used it in a previous project. I'm going to take the B and happy. Let's just cut that out. We're going to be creating like a sign using that. So I'm just taking my scissors and cutting around. Attach some hot glue to the card. You just need a trap. And we're going to stick that to the straw. So that's our B. And then happy, let's see how we want that to be. I've taken a very long time on this little Nomi. It's well worth it, I think, though. So I've just got this side left and hopefully I think I'll be done then. So what I'm going to do is just take some moss. And these are flowers I've actually stuck on moss um, in a previous project. And I'm just getting to reuse them now. But I think I might need a little bit more moss before we place those down. So I'm going to take my hot glue and just glue a little bit on the side here. I'm actually not really a gnome person, but when I make them, I actually like the gnomes that I make. It's kind of a bit funny, but I really do like this little guy. Right, so these are the small flowers. I actually got them on Amazon and they were from China, but they were very, very cheap. And I quite like them because they're dainty and they're pretty. I like everything that's quite small <laughs> and if you know me by now you know that I really love making miniatures and teacups and very like whimsical magical things and if you are new to my channel then I would love if you can click that subscribe button now I've cut the straw down to a size I'm happy with and I also placed a bee on the top and I'm gonna attach the straw to the side here with my hot glue. I thought I was finished but my brain threw another idea at me. So I'm taking one of these little miniature um, jars and I'm going to fill it with fake honey like I did on my first project. So I'm just getting my hot glue ready and I have this beautiful ribbon that I found actually in the thrift store. And I really, really love it because it looks like it's been printed on. And I think I'm going to go with this one here. So I'm going to cut that off. Let's start around about here and we're going to glue this on. We're going to stick that on like, like it's a label almost. Look at how beautiful that looks already. And we're going to put some honey in. There's my honey coloured hot glue. I'm not going to go all the way. We've just got enough, you can see there, look at that. I'm going to glue that right in there, so I want him to hold the jar now. So I'm going to just apply the glue, oh that's the honey colours glue still, oh well. And then we have to get his other hand on there as well. I've added a little bee to the sunflower and they've got like, let me just show you, they have printed wings and they're white and they're flat. Let me get one out. So I'm not really happy with them. So what I've done is I've added a little hot glue and it's really made quite a different set. I've even peeled it up very, very slightly so that it kind of looks more like wings. So that's a little tip if you do use these. And these are from Amazon. They usually come in a pack and I have used a lot. Again, very cheap because they come from China. So we went from this teacup and saucer set, which I think were actually really beautiful to begin with, to this cutie pie. He is a labour of love, that's all I can say. I don't think I've ever spent so long working on a gnome. And obviously we edit the video down, so it was a lot longer than it actually looks. But I really love him. He's definitely my favourite gnome I've ever made. 
So for our last thrift makeover, I'm taking this white jug and even though it is white, it kind of has like a greyish tint to it and I just really wanted to give it a fresh coat of paint. I mean, this isn't painted, so I am starting over here and sometimes I find that applying paint to surfaces that are really smooth like this just doesn't work very well with a typical paintbrush. So that's why I'm taking this sponge brush and it does give it a texture to it but you can sand that off if you don't like the texture. So my jar is nice and dry. I only did one coat of paint, but I think that's enough for me. You're gonna take some napkins and I'm gonna show you how to decoupage. You might have come across this technique before. If not, it's really, really fun, easy and addicting. Once you start doing this kind of craft, you really can't really stop. So you're going to take some napkins, and I have two here, I don't know if I'll use both. My husband is wondering whether I'm still alive because I've been crafting for so long. I think it's taken me two days to make these projects, so please do leave me a thumbs up and share this video with others. I've actually shared quite a few techniques and hacks, so it might be really useful for someone else as well. So I'm going to have a look at how many bees I want on there. I'm also going to use this one here just for the be happy. Again, all of this ties in with the other two projects. So if you're new to decoupage, you take your napkin. It doesn't have to be any particular napkin. Just get any napkin and you want to open it up. Why is this not opening? <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, this is the non-shiny side and you've only got one shiny side. And then you're going to take any layers out or off your main napkin sometimes you have to depends how many you've got in your napkin but in mine i've just got the one and then this gives you a really nice thin napkin to work with um, so then the next thing you want to do is just take your fingers and don't cut do not use the scissors to do this because it just looks really Odd. it just looks too neat almost some people wet their napkin but I never really find that I have to do that because I can rip it pretty well just like this okay and then have a look at where you'd like your napkin and I think mine will kind of go over like that so what I'm doing is taking Mud Podge and you can use PVA only if you water it down because PVA is really thick and it's just really not going to work. The Mud Podge is very thin and you don't want to add too much Mud Podge because it can rip your napkin. And I really love using decoupage for thrift makeovers. It just is a quick way to give something a makeover. And there's also a lot of possibilities because depending on the napkin design, you've just got so many napkins. And you're going to place your napkin on top. And this is just some cling film. I don't know what you guys are most cling film might be a UK thing but yeah you just take it and kind of press down on your napkin and this just sort of helps get rid of a lot of wrinkles the other tip that I have if you are doing decoupage is to go with a white background and make sure that you have painted your object white even if it's white like my jug was because you can see it just kind of melts into the background when you're working with a coloured background napkin it can kind of just look really untidy and you really don't get an effect like this. So then you're going to go over your napkin on top with your Mod Podge. And there are so many different types of Mod Podge. Look at that. It literally disappears into the, into the object that you are working on. And there's a lot of Mod Podges, Mod Podges, there's a lot of Mod Podge as I was explaining and the one that I'm using right now is glass. I typically use matte but I have run out of that so again just going with what I've got right now. 
Oh, look at how beautiful that is. And you can seal it. You can take a sealant or just go over it with Mod Podge as a sealant. This is decorative, so I'm not going to put it in to wash or anything or use it to drink out of or anything like that. And I'm going to go over the whole of the jug with this Mod Podge because it's gloss. So you'll be able to see, like if I just did this area, you'll be able to see that. And I just want it to look all the same. In the meantime, we'll start working on our bees. And I think, I'm not too sure if I should go with the bright coloured foil bees here. Because the one on the jug is the same. So I think I might go for the lighter ones. So again, let's start taking some of these. Just working around using my fingers, ripping it, and be very gentle. Obviously this is so fragile. And again, when you're applying the Mod Podge, go over it very lightly, just a thin layer, because it gets too saturated and it can rip very easily. Just taking the Mod Podge again, very lightly. Let's see where we'd like a bee. Think around about here, so just a small layer of Mod Podge there. And then we'll take the bee. Using the cling film, just dabbing again. And then securing the rest in place with more Mod Podge. Okay, maybe one here. I just love watching it melt into the background. So I went with three in the end because putting one here is just too symmetrical. So I'm taking this pre-made bow and I got this from Zadil and I'm gonna just stick that somewhere <laughs> whether the top or right here. I'm taking these arrangements apart and I'm gonna use that, whoops, <laughs> I'm gonna use that to place inside my jug. And here's our final transformation from that boring jug to this one here. Isn't it so much better? Oh, by the way, I did change the bow. I felt like that one was too big. So I went for the smaller one and I really like it now. I just love this whole project. All of these projects I personally just really have enjoyed making but also I think that they came out great let me know what you think especially if you're new to my channel please do say hi in the comments below so I'm going to be starting with making a wreath and I'm going to make it really differently I'm taking a set of paper plates this was from Morrison's and I'm going to be using this as my main wreath form just look at how beautiful the design is already. So we don't want it looking like a paper plate obviously. So I'm going to start decorating around here. And to do that we're going to be using moss. So this is my collection here. So grab your glue gun. You can see I use moss a lot. I've got moss stuck to the glue gun itself. And we're going to be adding glue and moss as we go. Starting just at the bottom here. I want to make sure it's all covered so I am adding quite a bit of glue there let's give the moss ready like this and we're just going to start gluing it you might see a little soil falling <laughs> that's because some soil is still attached any little space I'm adding more hot glue and just making sure that the sides are nice and covered so we can't see any of the plate I've got my artificial flowers now and we're going to start sticking them down I did finish covering the plate with the moss as you can see so I'll just taking my glue again I've taken a few different sprigs of my artificial flower collection so I'm starting on the side with these white ones And then I think I'm going to go with the yellow, nice and bright. 
just overlapping the white flowers a little there. I snipped off some lavender and again just taking my glue and overlapping the last yellow flower there. Taking a smaller one, so I'm just layering really, I'm adding the same yellow one. I'm going to start adding some flowers at the bottom and this is actually a paper one. So this is a sunflower, I thought it's just going to add that touch of colour. I haven't quite figured what I want at the bottom or the top so I'm just going to carry on working on this side and I'm going to try to mirror this side. I'm not actually sure if I've got all the flowers but we'll have a look. So I'm taking the white ones first. I've actually run out of this yellow flower here so we're only going to be able to place one. Let me just lift that a little just trying to make sure it's kind of similar to the other side there. Let's add the lavender. I've got plenty of the lavender. So at the bottom here we're going to be overlapping the flowers. These are the paper ones. It's going to go something like this. I'm going to be taking one of these butterfly wall stickers and I always give them a little bend. This <laughs> has been used for another project so it's not too sticky now. So I'm just taking a drop of hot glue in the middle there and let's add that right here to the side of the wreath. I'm taking these tiny really cute bees. These are toppers so I'm just going to add the glue right there. Gosh they're tiny so you have to be careful with your fingers. And I'm going to glue one there and one up here and I think we're going to finish off with a bow at the top. Guys, these flowers here aren't doing it for me, I don't know why. <laughs> so this is what happens. I mean, I was debating off camera for the longest time. But yeah, I'm going to have to remove them and figure out what flowers I want there instead. I think it's the small dainty ones that do it for me. <laughs> so I even tried with these, but we're going to stick with these and I'm going to need quite a few. So I need to buy some more. Again, I'm going to be overlapping them, so kind of like this. This one's lost a petal, don't know where. Now, taking this bow, this is a pre-made bow. I got it from Zadil, I'll leave it in the description box. Um, and I'm going to just glue that on the top and then we're done. So this is a final project and now you can see that my intro poem really matches the whole theme here and I'm just so happy with this, like who would know that I made this using a paper plate? I love the background. For the next DIY, this is going to be pretty quick. We're going to be taking some tumble tower blocks, four in total, and we're going to stick them together using our hot glue. I'm also going to be taking some more paper plates, and these are again B themed from Home Bargains. So let's start with gluing these together. I just like to remove the glue and you do want to do that because you want it nice and flat and smooth. So again, so we've got our full blocks ready, then you want to place it on top of this section here, let me just get a pencil and you're going to draw along it and now you know how much to cut so grab your scissors if you don't want to use a paper plate or you don't have one you can just print something similar off the internet just going to glue that on. You can use this for a tear tray as well just to decorate it because it's a miniature. 
Now the next step is taking some moss again and we're going to just decorate the top of the tumble tower. So I'm going to get my hot glue ready and stick a few bits of moss on. This is optional, I don't really think you need to do it, especially if you're making this for a tiered tray. Just removing a little bit of the soil that's on the moss here. I'm going to be adding some flowers to the top, the same ones that I used in the first project. So sometimes you need to like cut cut them down a little bit because they stick up a bit too much so I think that's what I'm going to do and we're going to have this one coming down right here I think I'm just going to go with two and then to finish it off you can just leave it like this but I have this gorgeous brooch or brooch, however you like to say it. This was off the deal as well. I'm going to add that, I think, around about here. Yeah, not on top, you can't see them that well. So I think I'm gonna just stick him down here and we're done with this gorgeous little DIY. Quick and easy, but honestly, this one might be my favorite. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For the next project, you're going to be taking a champagne flute. These are from Poundland. And you're going to take the top half and what you want to do is get rid of this part here. So I have this tool that I'm going to be using. I've attached the blade to the top there and I'm just going to wait for it to get a little bit hot and then I'll be able to cut through the plastic. So you can see now it's getting hot and it's just cutting away at the plastic. This is a really handy tool and it was pretty cheap as well. So there we have it and then you can sand this up to make it nice and smooth. Next you're going to grab a cardboard, take a pencil and you want to draw along your champagne flute. Now you want to take your scissors and cut that out. Once you have your circle, what you want to do is stick that down, again using whatever glue you like. Then you're going to take the bottom of your champagne flute, add some glue. Then you want to stick it in the centre. And how cute is that? I've literally just made a cloche, so you can put things inside before you glue it down if you want. And you know, you can change this up for seasons and holidays, but we're actually going to turn this into a bee skep, as you've seen from the thumbnail. Now we're going to be taking a placemat, and this one is from Poundland as well, but if you don't have this, you can use just some string, some jute twine. So I'm taking it apart, as you can see, just gently pull at it, and it just comes away very easily. So you're going to take your hot glue and apply it right at the bottom and then take this piece and attach it and we're just going to keep winding this around. So I'm going to fast forward this and play some music. Now when you get to the top you're going to have the hole and it's up to you how you want to fill it. You can put it like this or you can carry on winding it around until you fill the hole. You kind of have to stick it one little bit at a time and I'm going to need to burn all of this off. Once I'm done with this
How cute is it? I'm really loving it. So off camera I just went and cut off all of the like excess little strands and I also went over it with a bit of fire. So now we're going to make the little hole and I tend to do it like quite kind of a big circle I'd say but I'm going for a smaller one this time because this is actually already pretty small and also realistically they are they tend to be very small holes. So I'm just taking a sharpie here going over a little section so this is kind of what they really look like but I feel like that's a bit small so I don't know if I should go for one bigger one so I have gone with another one in the end and you can make yours a circle I tend to but I just really want to go for kind of like a natural looking one this time I think I'm happy with this we're going to take one of these cuties again run out <laughs> and you can remove these but I don't mind them um, little sticky foam pads let's have one going down this way I got these off eBay by the way and perhaps another here so I've added a third bee here and then I'm taking the small flowers again and I'm going to stick them down to the base here and I'm going to have three I think and then we will finish off with this little step So here's our final project from today. I really hope that you have enjoyed watching. So for the first project, we're going to be making a spring gnome. I'm going to be making this the easiest way. I've done this before once. So I'm going to be using a disposable cup and this is going to be the main body of the gnome. To cover the cup, because obviously we don't want it to look like a cup, I'm taking this piece of felt and I'm going to wrap it around and cut its size and we're also going to glue it in place. Now you can see it doesn't quite cover but that doesn't matter because we're going to have the beard in this area anyway. So once you're done this is how it's going to look. I'm just going to secure those edges down. Next you're going to be taking a plant pot. So this is the one that I've got and it fits perfectly on here. We're going to paint it so I am going with a bright yellow colour. This is Lemon Yellow by Arteza. So I'm going to call this the Pot Head Gnome. So as you can see, I'm going to need a few layers of paint. So I'm going to try this one with my heat gun and then apply a few more layers. The next thing you want to do is grab some faux fur. So I've got this white one here. I actually wanted yellow just to tie in with spring. So I didn't have any dye either. In the end, I had to grab some paint and I took my material, added the paint with some water in a tub and then mixed it into the material and I've got this. So I actually did manage to dye it in the end and that explains all of the paint on my hands. So I'm going to stick this on my cup now. Then you're going to bring back your plant pot and we're going to stick it on the top here. Now I'm also taking a little bit of the faux fur and I'm going to stick it on the top so that it kind of looks like his hair is sprouting out of the plant pot. For his nose I'm going to be taking a wooden bead and I'm going to use some makeup just to colour it pink lightly. So I've got this old one that I had from when I was a child, honestly. I've had it for so many years and now I use it for my craft. So I've got this pink one. I'm just going to add that to the nose like this. And then taking my dotting tool, this is called. And you've got a sharp side and this one here is the one that I use just to make little dots with. And I'm taking my white acrylic paint just going to add three or two little dots on the nose. It's just just like this. And then turn your nose around, get some hot glue, 
we're going to place it usually I'll place it right under the hat but this time I'm going to place it just slightly under and then whenever you add the nose the gnome comes to life now we're going to embellish so I'm taking some sunflowers and I'm going to hot glue them onto the plant pot I'm also going to take a green leaf and add that right next to the sunflower it looks like it belongs but it doesn't it actually came from another plant and then I'm taking some bees and I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't want it to be 3D it's like a puffy sticker and it gives it some dimension so just adding a drop of hot glue there and then just adding a final bee there this is actually so wet, that's why it looks like a wet dog. So hopefully it dries and looks a bit better. Fluffs up a little bit, I'm going to brush it. I really love how unique and creative this gnome is. It's definitely one of a kind and I just love the sunflowers and the bees and the little bit of hair that's coming out of that pot. For the next project, I'm taking a piece of bark. I found this in the park, that rhymes. <laughs> And then I'm going to be taking some artificial flowers and greenery. So these are lavender. This was actually off a wreath. And then I've got some bits here. So I'm just going to be working with these, arranging them how I like, and then sticking them down with some hot glue. to place this purple fairy in the middle so I'm going to carry on arranging but I just needed to place her there to see how it looks in the grooves I'm going to add some small little sprigs like this and then I'm taking these flower heads to carry on decorating I'm taking a vintage butterfly and I'm going to add that right here just taking my hot glue again to stick that down and then let's add two toadstools going to have them at various heights so this one a little bit longer and then this one shorter so it comes down like this or vice versa you can just take them off the wires with some pliers so this one I'm going to stick directly down and then to finish off I'm taking a bee and I'm going to add that to the flower with my hot glue again just taking Sticky foam pad off. So here's the final project. Let me know what you think because I really love it. I think it's so sweet and I love the fact that I use the natural bark and then you've got the artificial greenery and I just love how all the colours and the elements have come together. The addition of the paper butterfly as well as that sweet bee sitting in the flower. Okay so for the next project I'm going to be taking this frame here, I don't like the colour of it, I actually painted this for another project so it's not even the original colour but I'm going to paint this white. So my frame is nice and dry now, I actually use like three layers and you still can see a little bit of the brown coming through but I don't mind that. And then I've taken some sticks and painted them, that's their natural colour. So we're going to turn this into a window, I'm going to cut them to size, this one fits perfectly actually. So I'm going to have one in the middle and then one going this side, so we're going to cut this and then you're going to stick them in place with whatever glue you're using, I always use hot glue. So now I'm just sliding the other one in position. And this actually doesn't need to be glued down because it just fits in there perfectly. Now we're going to start decorating the window and I'm going to take some moss as well as some flowers to do that. So let's begin with one of these paper flowers. I think I'm going to need some pliers to get rid of the wire. 
So I'm going to go with the pink and then I think a red. And then I'm going to be adding some moss to the corner as well. And depending on the moss that you, you're using, this one is reindeer moss and it's quite like chunky. <laughs> so sometimes I like to just trim it a little bit, neaten it up. And then in this corner again, I'm going to be adding some glue and then we're going to stick some moss down. I'm taking some more flowers. These ones are artificial flowers, so they're not paper flowers. And I'm going to stick them here. I actually replaced the paper flowers because I preferred the way that these look. I'm taking this butterfly sticker and I'm going to cut it because I don't like the excess card around it. And then we're going to stick it, I'm thinking here. We'll go ahead and stick that on. I'm going to leave the sticky foam pad on there because I do want a little bit of dimension. So I've just printed this on the internet onto some paper. It's a watercolour painting of a sky. And I'm going to stick that onto some card for stability because the paper is a little bit flimsy. And then we're going to add that to the back of this so it's going to be looking like this. How gorgeous does that look? And if you want to, you can actually do this by hand yourself. Watercolour painting is quite easy and it's really relaxing to do. So just taking my glue stick here to stick the image onto the card. I've just placed my window on top. I'm going to draw along it so I know how much to cut because the rest of that goes white. So you couldn't really see. And I'm sorry, I'm using fabric scissors. I know a lot of people get annoyed with that. Then once you've got it all ready and cut out size, take your glue and add some all the way down the border of the frame. Got to be quick with hot glue as well. Right, and then we have to secure that in place. This may be my favourite project from today. It's vintage, shabby chic and miniature so it really screams me. I'm going to be starting off with some Mod Podge. You can use PVA as well and just apply it all over. Next we're going to be taking some napkins. So I've got this one here. It's sea themed like I mentioned. I'm going to open it up. So we're basically doing some um, decoupage, sorry. We're taking some napkins to decorate and I find this really quick and easy. Like if you want to transform something, this is like one of the quickest ways I'd say. So you open it up, remove all of the inner layers so that you are left with the thin layer here. I'm just applying it. You've got to be quite gentle with this. And remove as many wrinkles as you can. Once you've done that, you're going to go over it with some more Mod Podge. You can choose gloss or matte. I'm using matte here. Once you've done that, you can start decorating the back and the sides. So you can take some paint. I'm going to just paint that white. Now I'm bringing some of that paint onto the corners and the sides, onto the actual napkin like this. Now as you can see I've also gone in and just added some blue shading. I'm going to be taking this pearl effect just to add a border around it. Now to finish up I'm just going to add a little bit of net on top in the corner, just cutting it and sticking it down. So that's our first DIY done, let's move on to the second. For the next DIY I'm going to be taking this apart and making something a little nicer than this hopefully. So I'm going to start off just by trying to get this off and then the backing as well. I'm going to paint this frame, update it a little. 
I'm getting rid of all of the material just by sanding it. Now I'm going to take some material, I've got this really nice light colour here, and I'm going to hot glue it on. Now I'm going to cut it so that we have the correct size. Now I've cut a piece of burlap and I'm going to add that onto the centre. Now I haven't made my burlap perfect but that's how I wanted it so that it looks like it's been washed ashore kind of thing. And I'm taking some shells, I've just arranged them and I'm going to glue them down. Now I'm going to add hot glue on the sides of the frame to stick this in. I've just taken a tube of blue and just with my finger smudged a little on the border. I felt like it needed a pop of colour. So that's our second DIY done, let's move on to the third. I'm sure you all know what I'm going to turn this into, well you do because of the thumbnail, but I'm sure you would have all thought of turning this into a boat as well because the shape is just so perfect. So I'm starting again by painting it. I'm going to be painting it in some neutral colours so that it looks like wood. I'm just starting with a coat of white paint here. Now I'm going in with the brown shading. I'm taking a stick, just a twig, and I'm going to add that in the centre so that I can start making the boat. Well, there's not actually much to do once I've done this. So just using my hot glue and sticking that in the centre. And then, just to finish the boat off, we are taking a piece of material. And I'm just going to draw out a flag in a triangle shape. Now I'm going to stick the material on the twig and I'm going to turn it a little like this and then stick it rather than just sticking it on like that. Now I've got this tray and I thought it kind of looks like water a little bit here so I thought what I'll do is turn it around and paint it so that it actually does look like water and then I'm going to place the boat on top. So I'm going to be using some watercolours and I'm going to use some shades of white and then blue. So after the white I'm going with the lightest blue that I have. beautiful ombre effect going on right now. So now I'm just taking the darker blue and I love watercolours because you can just shade a lot more easier, you don't have to be good at it. For our final DIY for today I'm taking this thrifted cup and I'm just going to start adding a little detail using an Arteza marker pen. Now I've filled my cup with some regular sand, this is like playing sand. And then I'm taking a miniature palm tree going to just add that in the sand and then I've got this miniature pack that I haven't actually got to use yet of like the umbrellas and the chairs so I'm just putting it together how cute is that I've just added this little starfish and shells and then a miniature human. I thought that just looks so cool. So that's the last DIY. Let's have a look at how they all come together. So just to remind you, this is the before and these are the after.
I personally think these look so much more better now. They're just so full of life and I really love the soothing colours of nautical crafts. If you have enjoyed, leave me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. So we're starting with the first DIY and we're going to be creating something inspired by Zen Gardens. This one is going to be sea themed and it's really good for kids sensory play. But I actually created this as a stress relieving desk decoration. So I've taken this bowl from Poundland, it's really beautiful and I filled it up with blue sand. Now you might have a tough time finding blue sand and it can be pretty pricey. So what I would recommend is just taking a regular playing sand which Poundland also stuck in the summer range at the moment. So it's really cheap and affordable. And then you want to just dye it so that you've got the blue colour you can use food dye. This is a really quick and easy craft and it's also a stress relieving making kit. So now I'm moving on to decorating and I've got this greenery, this plant, artificial plant from Poundland. I'm just taking off some of the stems and then I am wedging it into the sand so that it can hold. So then I just carried on decorating. I took some stones, which I then rearranged later on in the video, you'll see. I just used everything that's in my stash, but I am a crafter, so I probably got more than the average person. But definitely make do with what you've got. You can use a lot of nature like I'm using the stones and then I've also taken a piece of bark from the park and I thought this looked lovely. It just looked like something you would find in the sea and I added a starfish on top and then I added some shells and then finalised with some figurines but this is totally optional. You don't have to add them but I just thought they're super cute. How quick and easy was that? Honestly, it's so much fun. I definitely recommend everyone giving something like this a go. And they're really good as handmade gifts as well as things to sell. The second DIY is definitely the easiest and the quickest of them all. And if you like minimal, this is definitely the DIY for you because less is more with this one. So again, I'm making use of some Poundland items. Just taking the cocktail bowl as well as the playing sand. And I'm just filling the cocktail bowl with the sand until I was happy with how much was in there. Again, I'm making use of some bark because it looks like driftwood, so it really goes with the style and the theme. Once I placed that inside my bowl, I then took this faux air plant. It looks like a succulent, so you can use a succulent if you like because they are easier to find. And I just placed that in the corner. I then took an artificial starfish, I had a white version but the yellow one looked better and I placed that in and then just to finish off I took this little miniature boat and I placed that in there and I just thought that was the final touch, I was so happy with it. If you're looking for items like this I get them off eBay, they do come from China so they are really affordable but they do take a while sometimes to arrive. You can just type in miniature fairy terrarium boat or tree bench whatever you're looking for and you'll see the results i'm really happy with how this came out i feel like it makes a statement and it's just so soothing to look at i really am enjoying this piece and it was so cheap to make and quick and easy so bonus all around now we're on to the final diy which i would say is probably the most advanced diy out of them all so i'm starting off with a wine glass from poundland and then I'm taking some small gravel. I've just pulled a layer into there. Now I am using epoxy resin. This is actually the first time I'm going to be working with resin or epoxy resin. I've worked with UV resin and I am making some artificial water. That's why I am using the resin. I have generally used other things for my fake water in projects. So I've used hair gel from Poundland, the blue hair gel, I've also used candle wax. So there's lots of ways to be making artificial water. I've actually made a playlist, so if you want to check out all the other ways, if you don't want to use resin, you can do that. But let me tell you, I was really put off using epoxy resin because of the whole two-part thing, but it was a lot more easier than I ever imagined. So if I can do it, you can do it too. Don't be intimidated. So when using epoxy resin, you're going to have a part A and a part B, and then you're also going to have some instructions that come with resin. So make sure you follow that because it tends to be different. Like it will tell you the quantity to put and how long you need to mix the two parts together. So I measured out part A and then added that to the cup and then measured out part B, added that to the cup and then I had to mix it 
for two minutes. I also added in blue pigment that was just to create the colouring of the water. Another thing that put me off using resin was because of the fumes and you know the whole toxic thing but I actually found a no fumes and safe non-toxic resin so that's the one that I'm using now I got it off eBay also Panan do sell a small amount of resin I'll share the picture here it's a two-part resin it is a small amount that you're going to get but you can get like three or four to make a water feature the other thing I really don't like about epoxy resin is that you have to pour in little thin layers and then you've got to set it to cure so mine I had like a tiny layer and then I had to wait 10 whole hours for it to cure before I could then pour the second layer so if you have three layers that's like 30 hours and you have to wait in between each layer now, if you have time and patience then you've got no worries because you can just pour it and let it do its own thing and come back to it but because I had like a schedule with filming I was like oh it's taking so long but I just had to wait and when you're doing this your resin might have some bubbles if it does just take a toothpick and just poke them out or you can blow at them with a straw. We're going to be moving on to making the waterfall and the structure now. So I'm taking bark again. I'm going to glue these two and I'm just leaving this little bit here because that's where the waterfall is going to run down from. think that will do. Now if you're doing yours in a wine glass like mine, make sure that you have a correct size. You don't want it too big and then it doesn't fit into your cup or glass. Now for the waterfall structure itself, you can use a bit of plastic, so from a plastic bottle for example. I am just taking this old projector film and I'm going to cut a piece from that. So I'm just measuring the top all the way down to the bottom of where I kind of want it to go. Make sure you leave a little bit extra because we're going to be sticking that onto the artificial water in the glass. I'm also making it wider because when you add hot glue it kind of shrinks a little bit so I would suggest doing that also. So I'm taking my hot glue again. We're going to be using hot glue a lot. This is actually from Poundland as well. So I'm adding hot glue to the top. And then I'm going to attach that where I want. I've got to be quite quick doing this because hot glue sets so fast. So now I'm happy with the structure so you can see where I'm going to be placing the waterfall. It's just wedged nicely. In between those two pieces of wood. Now you're going to take the hot glue and add it to your plastic. So just creating lines really. Be careful not to burn yourself doing this. Make sure you go all over like from the edge and as we work on this it's going to start looking more and more like water. You just want to make sure that all of the plastic is covered because you don't want that plastic look. You just want it to look like water just by using the hot glue. This is a technique I always use. So you can see already it's taken the form of a waterfall. That already looks quite realistic, doesn't it? Now I'm just going to set this to dry before we work on it some more. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some white paint and this is really going to just be the final thing that brings it to life. I found out that paint was a little thin so I'm going with some thick acrylic now. Once you've painted it you just want to go over it again with some hot glue just to give it some more depth. Now to add that foam effect, you know the mist and all of that, we want to make it really realistic so I'm taking some toy stuffing again from Poundland and you just want to separate it a little bit like this and then we're going to hot glue that on top and I kind of, I know it kind of looks weird right now but it looks a lot better when it's stuck down. So again I'm just taking my hot glue to some areas 
Okay, my water's all cured now, as you can see. I'm going to install my waterfall now. So I'm just taking my hot glue and I'm going to add glue at the bottom where the bark is. And then also on the bottom of the waterfall. I'm just going to slide that in. Now I've just went to my garden to get some moss so that I can kind of add a little bit on the edges on either side. So this is today's final project. I really hope that this has inspired you. I love showing new techniques and teaching you things and this little waterfall you can use in fairy projects and all sorts of miniatures. I'm so glad that I finally tried resin because I'm loving that water and I think that the waterfall looks pretty realistic so I am happy with it. For the first DIY you're going to need one of these. I got this from Poundland and then I'm also going to be using some glitter. So I've got this white glitter here and a blue one because I'm going with the ocean theme and the sea for some summer decor. And then I'm using some Mud Pudge, so I'm going to start just by applying a thin layer of Mud Pudge over the glass. I got my glitter from the works, so I'm just going to open it up so that I can remove this bit here before I apply the blue glitter. I'm just covering it now, going all around. I'm going to add a touch of Mud Pudge so that I can add some white glitter so that I can just break up some of the blue. Next you're going to need some shells, so I've got these small ones here. I'm also using some pearl beads, these were from Poundland. And then also some starfish. Now I'm going to use my hot glue to secure these so I'm just adding a little on the starfish to begin with. And now I'm just going to carry on arranging everything on top of the glitter. So that's the first DIY done, I'll let you see how it looks and then we'll move on to the second. I really find this so soothing to look at, I think that the colours just complement each other but I also like that it's quite bright and what's good about these DIYs is even if you're not doing summer decor, you can use this for your bathroom. For the second DIY, I'm taking this that I got from Poundland, it's under the stationery section, it's called a desk tidy, so I'm just going to remove the label. And then I'm going to create an arrangement on top, so I'm going to be using a combination of seashells and dried flowers. I'm going to be using my hot glue again to stick them down. I've actually taken some beads off a bracelet because I thought they look really nice like pearls, so I'm just going to stick them on as well. some of this black plastic coral I just want to lighten it up so I'm going to take my white acrylic paint and give it a coat of that with my sponge brush and I'm just going to add some hot glue to the bottom 
So I've just printed this out from the internet, this quote, let the sea set you free. And this is on some paper, so I'm going to strengthen it, sticking it on to some card using this glue stick. Now I'm just going to cut it, and the way that I'm going to cut it is let the sea and then set you free separately. So I've got my wording and now I'm going to be using these sticky foam pads to give it some dimension. So just sticking them at the back here, making sure it's centered. And then I'm going to stick it directly in the center here. And then just do the same for this one here. I think this is my personal favourite from today. I just find it so beautiful. The colours are so soothing and relaxing. And I love the quote that I added. I think that was just a perfect addition. I think these are perfect to sell and gift as well. Okay, now for the third DIY, this is what I'm going to be using. I think I got this for 50p in the sale. And what we're going to do is remove the label, remove this and remove the backing. Now the backing can be a little tricky to remove because it's actually nailed in. So you might need to use some pliers, uh, just something to wedge in between here so that you can open it up. Okay, so we want to cover this, so I'm going to be taking my glue stick again. And I'm just going to add some paper to this. So just cover it all in glue. You can just print this out, like you, you, you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can just print it out to size a nice background that you like and stick it on. But I'm going to do this with some paint. And you're going to take your scissors and trim off all of the excess. So I've got my watercolour paints here and I'm just going to do a little background in the blue shades just so that it's like the sea. So I'm going to start with the darker blue and then we're going to go lighter as we go up. Now I've just got a little bit of this, I thought it would just be really nice in the corner so I've cut a little bit off, I'm just going to adjust it and stick it down with my hot glue. You're going to take your frame and then you want to pour some sand at the bottom, so and then do some in the summer range so you can use that. So now I've got my sand here and my background, I'm going to take some shells and you're going to go from bigger size downwards because of the sand, well I've got it like that, you might have it level but I kind of want it at an angle. So I'm taking my biggest shells I can find and I'm just going to stick them down with my hot glue. And you also want to make sure that you get flat ones so that it can basically stick inside the frame otherwise it's going to be too bulky and you're not going to be able to add the backing back onto your frame. So before we add this on just remove any sand from the top and from the frames because we're going to be adding glue there might be easier to use a paintbrush to do this. Now we're going to take our hot glue and add it to the frame all around. I'm just going to hold that in place for a while until the glue sets. 
Now I'm just going to tidy this up off camera and then you can add a little Poundland hook at the back if you want just to hook it on your wall. So this is the final DIY for today. If you can't go to the beach, let the beach come to you. I love creating budget decals, so taking pound shop items and turning them into something that looks way more is something that I'm just so passionate about, so I hope that you have enjoyed watching. For my first DIY, I'm going to be turning this into something. This was a little barrel, a wooden barrel used to hold some coffee inside, and I just couldn't throw it away. I thought I have to come up with something, and I didn't want to use it for something typical like a utensils holder or a stationery holder, and so I gave it a little bit of thought and I decided I'm going to turn it into a wagon. So what I'm going to do is turn it around and then I'm going to saw it in half, so I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, I'm back now and I've cut this. So I want to just hot glue the lid onto it. And also these have come off. So I just want to hot glue those back in place. It's a little rough around the edges, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of sanding to smooth that out. Now, before I start the painting process, I want to get all of the little bits to complete the wagon. So I've got some wheels here from this toy, and I'm also going to use this stick just for the handle, and then some wire just to add here. So I'm just going to get started and remove the wheels with some pliers. Hopefully they come off. Okay, that did not work, so plan B. I'm going to try to cut them off. Alright, so a few splinters later, <laughs> I finally managed to get them off. I'm just going to sand them. I've sanded two because some of the wood is kind of stuck inside still. So I'm just going to finish doing these two and then I've got some chopsticks that I'm going to use so that I can stick them under the wagon because that just doesn't look right does it so it needs to go under there and it needs to have a little bit of wood like this So as you saw, I've just cut the chopstick and sized it up and now I'm going to stick the wheels either side of the stick. So I've done my wheels, I'm just going to set them aside to dry a little bit more. And now I'm taking my handle and I think this is too long so I'm just going to cut it a little. Now I'm going to attach it to the wagon with a little hot glue. Now I'm going to add the hot glue just in the centre so that we can stick them under the little barrel. And then do the same for the other one. Now I'm moving on to creating a little handle on top of that, so just taking my pliers and cutting off a little wire and then I'm just going to bend it to create a little hook so that I can attach onto that and then I'm just going to take your hot glue to stick that on. Now we're going to start the painting job, so I'm taking this acrylic bronze paint here and I'm just going to start painting the wagon. I want to keep these black strips black so hopefully I don't get any paint on there but if I do then I'll just go over it with some black paint. I'm also going to do the same for the wheels and the handle.
I finished painting the wagon but it's a little too bronzed for me so I'm just going to add in a little bit of darker brown using this powder from Arteza. Just going to add a little to my palm. And these are really nice because it gives it a touch of colour without being too much. So you can see it's really transforming it now. It's really making such a big difference. It's giving it like an aged look. So I'm going to add that to the wheels as well. Also adding it to the top. And a little to the handle. Kind of like shading, adding a little bit of shading here and there. I'm just going to go over these a little bit with a black sharpie pen because some of the paints come onto that. I actually intended to use some real plants in here and use this as a planter, so you can do that. The shops are closed at the moment because it's Easter. Then I was going to use some artificial ones, so again you can do that if you like, using a floral brick. But I decided to settle with lemons because my second DIY is going to be lemon. I thought I'll just go with the lemon theme. So I've added some of this in there, which was from a really old project. I just thought it would give it a really nice farmhouse look. And then I'm going to be taking these miniature lemons that I got online. And I'm going to just place them inside. And then I'm going to be adding a little bit of greenery just to give it some colour as well. So I've just snipped these off some artificial plants that I had and we will just stuff that in the corner. Add another. I'm adding in a little bit more detail onto the wagon using my Sharpie pen because I just felt like something was missing so you can see there you go, you can see I'm making some lines. I'm going to do that all across the wagon and then the wheels as well. So that's the first DIY finished. I'll let you see how it looks and then we'll move on to the second. So we went from this to this. Now this little wagon did take some time, but honestly I think it's just so rewarding bringing something to life instead of throwing it away, and I just know that I can change this up whenever I want for it to hold something else. So for the second DIY, this is the trash that I'm going to be using, and this is just a chocolate kit. I'm going to give it a bit of a wipe. So to cover the box, I'm going to be doing some decoupage, so I'm going to use some napkins. These are the ones I've got, they're nice and just go with the lemon theme. I don't know why, I just smelt them for some reason, I thought it was going to smell like lemon. So you just open the napkin, and then you remove all of the inner layers. And I'm going to do this as though I am wrapping a present, so I'm going to apply some glue. You don't want to do too much when you're doing mud, um, when you're doing decoupage, not mud podge. So you can use PVA for this. You don't have to use mud podge. Just going to cover the back of the box and the sides. And now I'm just going to place it in the center. And then bring the napkin up the sides and do the same for the top. The bottom and the other side as well. Now just take the scissors and give it a little tidy. cut off all the excess now so I'm going to go over it with some mud podge and you can use gloss or matte to do this. I'm also going to make sure it's nice and stuck down properly. I'm 
I need to let this dry a little bit. I do like that it looks quite vintage as well. But to decorate the borders, I'm going to be using some washi tape. So this is my collection. I've got a few more as well. I found this lemon one. So I think I'm going to use that. So the writing is still showing through. I'm going to have to use a few layers just to cover that up. I decided to add some napkin on top of the text just to kind of like make it easier for the washi tape because when I was adding the washi tape it just wasn't covering the text basically. So I'm just adding the last strip on there before I start working on the inside of the box. I just had to take my craft knife and open the top up because it got sealed with the Mud Podge and the napkin so I can work on the inside. And I'm just taking some artificial grass mats that I have got and cut it to size and I'm going to glue it with hot glue inside. So we'll start with this piece here, just adding my glue to the back. And then just adding this other little scrap piece I had. And then I've got this small basket that I got from a Christmas fair in the charity shop. And I've added a little bit of burlap, some artificial leaves in the corner, and then one of my little miniature artificial lemons. And that's going to go inside the box as well. I think I'm going to place it on the right. I'm going to add this bowl with some hot glue just in the centre of the box. Now to finish up, I'm just going to be taking this wooden sign embellishment you can write on. So I've got a chalk pen here and I'm going to be writing lemons 29p. I had to google how much they were. Now I'm just going to add the sign inside the box and then adjust it to where I want. And then I'm going to just close it so that it stays put. So we went from this empty box to this cute adorable shadow box. I know a lot of you love farmhouse as well as lemons for summer and I have to say I really do love the colours. It's just so refreshing, cooling and soothing to look at. So for our first Poundland bead DIY you're going to take one of these and it comes with a lid and a straw so I've just removed those. And then I'm also using some string. I almost forgot what it was called then. And one of the spoons, they come in a pack of three for a pound. So you're going to start with your string and you can use normal twine. Add some glue, you just want to get rid of this neck that's showing. So I'm going to cover it with this string. And you're just going to wrap it around after you stick it down to the base. Okay, so here it is all covered now. You want to take some paint and you might have to mix the colour up so that it looks like honey. And we're just going to drizzle it down all across this little pot. And if you're having trouble with this, another way to do it is to take your hot glue. That way you've got a little bit more control of how you want the design. And then you just go over it with a little bit of paint. see that looks so much better than the one that I did with the paint alone. Now I'm just going to start adding the paint on top of the hot glue. Once you've done that you're going to take your spoon and just insert it inside and it's up to you if you want to add a little hot glue so that it's nice and secure or just go without. I think I might add a little. Now you're going to bring back the lid without the straw and you want to keep it at an angle and we want to hot glue it to the spoon and just to the edge there. They sell these in Pounan and I thought it would be really nice to add Winnie the Pooh's head maybe on the centre here just to break up some of that colour and shine. I'm 
going to add some twine to the handle again just to break up the colour and so that we can coordinate with his head because it's kind of the same colour isn't it so I'm just adding some hot glue and then we'll wind a little around that just adding some final detail here using some off cut flowers from other projects I'm just going to stick that to the handle and I feel like that also breaks up some of that gold I actually have these honey coloured hot glue sticks and they're really nice for making fake honey I just decided to do it this way instead this time just in case you don't have those Right, moving on to the second DIY, we're going to take one of these, I think they're called, let me just have a look, tile stickers, peel and stick tiles. So I've got one of these and I'm just going to remove this part here. And then what you want to do is basically paint it so that it looks like the honeycomb and it matches the first DIY. So again, I am just using gold to do this. I'm actually going to use my sponge brush to dab this on. While that's drying you want to take a pound and canvas and this is optional but I'm just going to prime it with some white gesso. You can use white acrylic paint if you like. So as you saw I didn't paint the centre and that's because we're going to stick this on there so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm impatient but I do suggest leaving that to dry before you take this and stick it on. You're just going to peel this away and add it just to the centre. Now you're going to grab these letters from the works and they fit perfectly. It's up to you if you want to leave it as it is, plain, or you can colour them in using any sharpie pens. I'm going to colour it with this black one just so that it can stand out a little bit more. Now I'm simply using these because I don't trust my own handwriting so if you do then you can go ahead and do that or you can even use a Cricut if you have one. I think that's such a lovely contrast so you can see the difference there. I think I should have used my Cricut for this, it certainly would have been faster. Now I've finally got all of the letters so I'm just going to hot glue them in place. This is what it's like crafting with two cats. I'm going to be really brave and just draw like, it's kind of like a spring, you know, to show that something's moving or flying. And yeah, I'm just going to freehand this. I did try to do it with a pencil first, but I just couldn't see it. So I'm just going to have to go straight in with the Sharpie. Now I'm taking these little bees. I got them off eBay. And I'm just going to add some hot glue because like that does not stick at all. And then we'll just add it to that bit there. So here's the second DIY. I'm really glad that I coloured in the letters because I think it just wouldn't have looked right otherwise. And that the spiral came out okay. For the next DIY you're going to be taking one of these glasses from Poundland and you're going to turn it upside down. You're also going to take their twine and what we're going to do is hot glue it to this glass and just keep winding it and we might need to use more hot glue as we go but we'll see. Just reaching the top now, so I'm adding hot glue until I finish 
the rest of the glass which I actually have used all of the twine up hopefully I can finish it with what's left if not I think I've got some more in my stash got so much hot clay on my fingers as well let me just peel them up because they're getting in the way a little bit be careful not to get burnt doing this the amount of times I've got burnt with hot glue ouch okay there's another one and then with the excess I'm just going to add a little glue to the end so you're going to take a thicker twine rope so that one's more like string this one is I'd say more rope and we want to create a circle so I'm just seeing how big I want the circle I think a little bit smaller than that. I think that looks about right. So then you're going to cut it. And then we're going to glue it together to form the circle. Then we're going to glue it in the center these glue strings if you've got a hack for that please do tell me because they drive me crazy okay so we're just going to glue that down now all right and then once you've done that you want to take your black sharpie pound and do these and then you want to color the inside let me just cut some of that off yeah color the inside so that it's all black I'm just going to clean this up a bit. I have seen people like clean the twine up with fire, but that really scares me. I feel like, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know, I keep feeling like it's just gonna catch a light. Again, I'm going to add some hot glue to this, dripping. Now I'm just colouring the honey again. This time I'm not doing it with paint, I'm just using a marker. Then I'm adding these two flowers which are from Poundland. Just on the side there, doesn't that look pretty? <laughs> That's a mix between pretty and beautiful for you there. And then seeing where this goes I think that would look really nice there so again just adding some hot glue to that and here's today's final DIY I just think it's so cute and pretty I really do love all of them if you haven't already make sure you subscribe for more creative DIYs so you go and start off with a mason jar and I've got this from Poundland and of course it comes with the lid as well I've just taken it off I need to give this a bit of a clean because I used it for a previous project so what you want to do is just take some gold paint and I thought gold kind of suits the bee theme and the honey color I'm going to be using our teaser products again the link is in the description box because their products are just amazing the quality is so good so what you want to do is this is not the color that I'm going to be using I can't find the gold right now you're going to just squirt a little bit of paint inside your mason jar then you want to turn it around so that you cover the entire jar. Now you're going to set your jar aside and then you're going to be taking the set of spoons. This is from the kitchen aisle in Poundland. I'm going to be covering these or decorating them doing decoupage which is basically using some napkins to decorate these are the napkins I've got from Home Bargains they've got two different designs that you can choose from so I thought all of them were gold like this but this is how the other sides look I'm going to be using these ones so what you want to do is just remove the inner layer so that you've got the one layer to work with And it's up to you if you want to do your decoupage using the whole napkin like this so that you're covering it or you can cut around the little bees 
and just stick, stick them on like that so throughout the spoon. I think I'm just going to go with using the bees so I'm just gently cutting around them. And remove as much excess as you can. Then you're going to take your PVA or some mud pudge and we're going to stick it on to the spoons with this. So I'm just going to carry on doing that and I'm going to fast forward this. It's raining quite heavily, there's like a storm going on, so hopefully you can still hear me. I'm using my second napkin, I'm going to use this area here, and I'm going to do the same technique with the decoupage, and place it in the centre of the jar. I'm just going to add a little bit of background, so I'm taking some of my Arteza watercolours, so that I can just paint in the centre here before I add my napkin. I'm just going to paint a little bit of the spoon with some of this white watercolour paint. I'm just painting my last spoon now. So I'm being really careful just to go around the bees. This is just to make the decoupage look less obvious. So when I get around where the bees are, I just use my finger so I have more control. So this looks a little bit of a mess right now. We want to tidy it up and I'm just going to be taking some rope. We're going to create a circle and just make it look a lot neater than it does at the moment. So I'm just going to create a circle, cut it up and stick it in the centre with some hot glue. Now I'm just going to add some hot glue to the rope. This one is like honey coloured sticks but if you don't have any you can just use clear glue and paint it gold. Now I'm just going to decorate the neck of the jar and you can do this with some twine which Poundland also do. Uh, or you can use this. I'm going to use this because I feel like I've used too much gold brown kind of stuff and this will go with the spoons that we have made and that I have painted white and it will also just break up all of the gold because I do feel like it can be a little bit too much otherwise. I'm just going to start sticking the rope on so just at the back here and then I'm just going to wind it around once you've done that, add a little hot glue to the back, just to stick the final bit down. And then you're going to take your utensils and add them inside your jar. Lastly, I'm just taking one of these little bows to add to the centre, just felt like something was missing. So here's the first DIY completed. I really love how it came out. I just think it's so cute. Let me know if you decorate for summer and if you do, what theme you go for. I do like bees. I just find them so adorable. I'd also like to know if you have tried decoupage. It's one of my favourite techniques to just give something a bit of a transformation and decorate it. Now we are moving on to the second DIY and I am using these 8x10 photo frames from Poundland and you can do this 
for any style like I'm just doing B theme to match the rest of our ideas in this video but I just can't wait to share this with you it's one of my favorite hacks to do because it's really hard to get hold of a vintage book in an A4 size so it can fit your frames I managed to look for one and find one online and it's so beautiful because it actually is vintage and there's really really gorgeous illustrations and it's all about flowers so that's the first thing you're going to want to do is print some of that text off I have four pages to fit my four frames then once you've done that you want to go onto Google or whatever search engine you use and you want to type in anything you're looking for so if you're doing a bee theme for example you can do Alice in Wonderland you just want to find some images and you want to make sure that the background is white that's super super important so I've gone and looked for some bee images made sure the background is white and then what you want to do next is put these back into your printer but what you want to do is turn them over like this so that when they go into the printer and they come out they're coming out on this side here so then once you've put these inside the printer you can then go and print out your B images or whatever images you've chosen to do and what's going to happen is that they're going to basically print on top of these okay so this is my printer tray these are my vintage text printouts I'm going to put them in this way slot that back into the printer and now all we need to do is go and print our images out and before you print your image out make sure that you resize it so that it fits whatever size you're working with in your frame so I'm working with A4 so I just made sure that I enlarge this image and then you're ready to print There you go, look at how it's come out. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to go and print a few more out. So once you're done, this is how they're going to come out. Absolutely beautiful, I really do love these. Look at this one, so gorgeous. On the fourth one, I kind of was running out of some ink, so it hasn't come out very strong, so it's definitely my least favorite. And on the images that I did choose, I did want kind of like a drawing, illustration, watercolour effect so that it actually looks like art which I think really adds to it because it looks like a mixed media piece so I do suggest doing that instead of looking for clip art or anything like that these just look so much better in my opinion so let's get them into the frames now so for your frames you want to remove all of the backing because the printouts in the A4 size don't fit this frame exactly so we're going to need to cut its size and the way that I do that is I remove all of this and then I use the paper that's inside as a template so you're just going to pop them over your printout we're going to draw along this and then cut it out Okay, so now I've done that, I'm just going to take your papers and place them inside the frame and then we're going to bring back the backing, insert that in and just secure that. So this is today's second project done. I really love this. I think it looks so high-end and expensive. So I've made three going across my hallway. Moving on to the final project for today, I'm taking this deep frame from Poundland. I love these. They're like shadow boxes and there's so much you can do with them. Next, you're going to go onto Google, type in any background that you like, and then print that out. I just used an inkjet printer and I just printed on regular paper. Measure the inside of your frame so that you have the correct size. Once you've done that, you can cut your image and then stick it inside using some PVA or Mod Podge. Now this is just optional but I chose to go over it with some gloss mod podge this is because it just makes it look like a hand painting and then I also sprinkled some white glitter on you're going to need a piece or a few pieces of foam brick you can cut it to size using your craft knife and then attach it to the bottom of your frame using some hot glue then you want to cover that foam brick with some moss again I just used some hot glue to do this I then took some bright artificial flowers and I cut them to various lengths and then just poked them through the floral brick. 
I then took some artificial sprigs and I hot glued them on the side of the frame as well as two little bees. We're going to make our little bee look like he's flying in the middle of our frame. To do this you're going to need some clear string. This is usually used for jewellery making. So you're going to cut it to size, hot glue on the top and then take your little bee and hot glue it on the bottom of the string. For some contrast in colour I am taking these dried baby's breath and I am cutting a few and just adding that inside the mask. So this is today's final project, I just can't choose which one my favourite is. If you can let me know in the comments because I love hearing from you and reading what you have to say and if you love what you see make sure you subscribe. So first off I am starting with this mirror that I got from Poundland, I'm just going to basically be using it as a tray and then I'm going to fill it up with with some of this white sand that I have got from Ikea. Then you're going to take a glass jar like this and you want to make sure it's not too big, not too small so that it can fit nicely in the centre and you also want to make sure you have something that fits a planter so I'm going to be using this artificial plant here so you want to make sure it actually does sit inside and fit in there nicely but what I'm going to be doing is removing this, so I don't want this part here. So you just give it a tug and it comes out. This is also from Ikea by the way. So you're going to fit that in the centre there. And then again you're going to take your white sand and we're going to pour some inside here. And I'm going to just stuff this inside and I'm going to make sure that I cover this black area here with the white sand. So I've just gone and poured some more sand just to ensure that all of that black bit of plastic is covered. So I'm going to go and return this back to the centre now. I got this from my mum a few years back and I haven't got to use it so today I opened it up and I was just so happy with everything that's inside because it's really perfect for this DIY. So I'm just going to take a few shells from there, I've got this big one here and I'm going to lie it against the glass just like this. So next I'm going to go with this piece here and it's actually meant to be this way but I'm turning it around because I like how rustic it looks, that's knocked over but we'll put that back in a bit. The next thing I'm taking is another piece, this time I'm going to have it this way around and I'm just going to place that there. And then lastly one last shell which is this one here and we're just going to place that on the side here. So this is the first DIY done and now we're going to move on to the second. The second one is super easy and quick as well, I'm going to use this shell that I got from B&M. This time I'm going to take a darker sand colour and I'm just going to pour that on the shell. I'm just going to get rid of all of these little clumps. Next you're going to take a tea light and just remove this foil bit here because that doesn't look too grey. Then we're going to place that in the middle, just like that. Now you can leave off here if you want it to be really simple but I'm just going to add a few more things so I've played around as you can see off camera and I'm going to place this shell here and that shell there and then I've got a bag of these from Wilco glass pebbles and I'm going to place three on either side Just like that. I mean I make it look really simple but it does take me a while to do all of this off camera and then I record it when I'm ready. So there you go, second and final DIY done. So let's have a look at how it all looks together. So here's both DIYs together. Today's DIY is really easy but I absolutely love the outcome so I can't wait to share it with you all. 
I was actually super excited to try this because it was a technique that I haven't done before but I've always wanted to and you go and see what I'm talking about later on in the video but for now you're simply going to start with a bauble so of course the bauble that you need are the clear see-through ones that open up so that you can fill it with whatever you like so because summer is around the corner i decided to do this in a beach theme but honestly you can use this idea for christmas as well just fill it up with whatever you like so i've took some white sand and i poured that in and then i'm taking some shells and adding that inside So this next part is the one that I was talking about earlier in the video. We're going to be doing a marbling technique. So you're going to get yourself a tub, something you're probably not going to need or use again, and then you're going to fill it with water. Regular water will do, it doesn't need to be anything special. And then you're going to take some nail varnish or nail polish, and you can also use acrylic paint. I am using the pouring acrylic paint here from Arteza. So I did try using the acrylic paint and I also used nail polish. And I actually preferred the result of the nail polish, so I would recommend going with that. So all you're going to do is take your paint or your nail polish and pour in a small amount into your water. Now if you are using nail polish to create your marbling effect, you have to work pretty fast because it can just dry on top of the water and then it doesn't really stick onto the object that you're using. Then once you've poured in your paint or your nail polish, you're going to take a toothpick or just something that you can stir it around a little bit with so that you've got that nice marbling effect. And once you've done this technique, you know that you can use it for anything. So you can use it for mugs, whatever you like. So this time, of course, we're using our bauble. I just wanted my top of my bauble to be covered in the marble effect. So I didn't like dunk in the whole thing, just the top of it basically. So I'm just swirling it around in the water and I was having a look just to see how much has come on to my little bauble and then when I was happy I just got it out of the water and let it sit to dry. And this is the final project, nice and dry. I absolutely love this blue colour and I just love this whole technique. It was so simple to do but I feel like it really transformed the bauble. And there you go, you've got yourself a nice bit of the ocean in a small orb. My first thrift find is this teapot. So I'm going to start giving it a new life or giving it a makeover by painting the handle white. I'm also going to take this out because I don't need this bit. I also do have to give this a wash because as you can see, it's pretty dirty. I've just come back from cleaning it out and honestly, it looks like it's transformed it already. So the white paint that I'm going to be using is this one here. It is a test of part in chalk white and it's going to be hard to spray paint it obviously, so that's why I am using the paint. Okay, so then once your handle is dried, you're going to pour a layer of white sand. Now, if you don't have any white sand, feel free to use salt. That's what I use if I don't have any at hand, but thankfully I do have some today. So I'm going to just pour, I don't know, maybe three inches of sand. Then you're going to grab some succulents, I will link these for you in the description box. And then you're going to just poke it in to the sand. I'm going to take a few more succulents and I also have some moss with me. I'm going to use a really, really bright coloured one. So I'm just going to play around. I've got this crystal, I've got some of these decorative pebbles, some stones. So this is my moss. I'm just going to take a handful and then we're going to place it at the back of the succulent. Then I'm going to take my crystal, just place that inside. Okay, I've just decided to move the crystal to the front because it wasn't really getting seen when I was putting in the other succulent here. I 
placed another succulent here at the back and then I'm just placing a small amount of stones at the front and then I think we are done. So here's a quick look at our first completed DIY. I really like this, it's just so modern and I love that the white sand brings out the colours in the plants and everything else. It just really pops, it's so vibrant. Okay, so let's move on to DIY number two now. The next DIY is really, really quick guys. I've got this little miniature wicker basket. I am going to decide to keep it the original colour because I kind of like it, it's going to work with my theme. And if you haven't guessed already, this is a farmhouse style. So I'm taking some burlap and I'm going to cut it to size so that it can fit inside my basket. Then I've got these small miniature lemons that I'm going to pop inside. Lastly, I have snipped off some leaves from an artificial bouquet that I have and I'm just going to pop them in the corner there. Look how cute that is! I think I'm going to change this up for the season so when it's fall I'm going to have apples and maybe some vegetables in there and I think that's so cute. For the third and final DIY I have taken this thrifted teacup. I don't know why, it always reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. I'm going to start off by filling it up with some blue sand. Then I'm taking another thrift find which are these dolphins. They kind of look outdated I guess if you have it as decor on its own but I think if you put it within something and it's kind of like in the background to a diorama that kind of thing I think it works really well so I'm going to give it a try anyway put it in the back and then I'm going to cover this area with the blue sand just so it makes it look more natural. I'm going to take one of these slate rocks so it kind of looks like a cliff and I'm going to just put it here in the corner and then I'm going to take my mermaid figurine we're going to put her there just beside the rock and again we're going to cover this little stone that she's on I've just gone and leveled the sand up a little bit here because I wanted to have a small curve and then I'm going to place this little starfish on top and then I also have this tiny shell which is going to be placed right here now the last thing I'm going to do is take this pearl garland I'm going to thread it through here and we're going to hot glue it on the side of the cup Here's a look at our third and final DIY before we see them all together. Honestly, I'm not sure this one might be my favourite. It's between this and the teapot. And I'm just glad I finally found a use for those dolphins. I think it came out so cute. So this is my jar. It's a bit of a fancy one. It's got like a candle holder and a jar stuck all together as one. First up, you want to create some kind of barrier because we're going to be pouring in some artificial water. It's kind of like resin. So I'm going to be using a bit of plasticine just to create the barrier so that I can get the water exactly where I want it because I don't want it to cover the whole surface of the jar. So I'm just squishing my plasticine and then we're going to insert it inside the jar. I think that might do. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is our barrier inside. If you don't have plasticine, you can use clay for example. The next thing you're going to want is some resin or a bottle of this realistic water. This realistic water works like resin in the sense of that it's the same curing time. It needs to be poured in layers, but the only difference is, is that you don't have a part A and B. So that just saves me time and that's why I'm using this. Then I'm taking these miniature rocks and I'm going to place them inside the jar in the little barrier that we've created and then pour some of that realistic water on top. 
Then you're going to want to use some kind of colouring for your water. So I'm taking this Mika powder from Arteza in emerald green. They also provide you with a little spoon. So that's come in handy because I'm going to use it to mix everything together. Look at how beautiful this colour is. I really love these powders because they have a metallic shimmer to them. Make sure to check the description box if you want the links for the powder as well as the realistic water. And now we're simply just going to pour it in to the little area that we have created. So as you can see I've just added in a bit more plasticine because I want the water to be quite high and when you're working with resin or this realistic water you do need to pour it in layers and wait for it to cure. So this was my first layer and then I waited 24 hours and I'm going to pour another layer. So I might need about three layers in total, we'll see. Okay, so our second layer has cured. We're going to go in with a third layer now. I'm going to add a bit of landscaping by adding a stone in the middle of the water. It's wet at the moment, it hasn't cured. And again, while it's wet and hasn't cured, I'm going to add this miniature boat inside. Once everything's cured, you're going to remove the plasticine. Okay, so once you remove all your plasticine, you're going to fill the sides with some sand. You can take a paintbrush and tidy any of the sand that has fallen into your artificial water. Okay, so we're going to carry on working on our landscaping and next you're going to need some substrate or some soil depending on whatever plants you're using. But make sure that the plants that you're using are suitable for terrariums and closed terrariums because my one is a closed one. So I inquired and made sure that I grabbed some plants that are suitable for a closed terrarium and humidity. So tropical plants do really well. If you're a beginner, I would suggest using moss or fern, they do really well in closed terrariums. Don't use any cacti or succulents in closed terrariums. If you're having an open terrarium, they're fine. So I'm going to pull my substrate and start arranging my plants. I do recommend using a funnel to do this. If you don't have one, you can go ahead and make a paper one like I have here. I'm going to add some height just to make the landscaping look really interesting by adding in some stones and pebbles and then covering them up with some plants. Then it's completely down to you if you want to take some more rugs and add them in. I did try but it just looked way better without it because I don't have much space that I'm working with. So once you're done, all you need to do is take your lid and put it on top. And this is the finished project. I am so delighted with it. I mean, I think we can all do with a little bit of paradise in our homes right now. And for those that know me, know that I absolutely love my miniatures and terrariums, artificial water, nature and greenery. I'm going to be starting off with this. I bought this from the thrift store about a year ago now. So I am looking forward to finally getting around to using it. I'm also going to use some of this, I brought it online. So I'm going to use this as a foundation to make a summer wreath. I am going to use these beach boat set from Poundland. I'm going to use one of these but we're going to spray paint it white because the green is just way too bright for me. Okay so while I wait for my boat to dry we're going to take this net and I'm going to turn this around. We're going to apply some glue and stick it to the back. Okay. 
I'm also bringing a small amount on the front just on this side here so I'm going to do the same thing and stick that down and then we're going to cut it Okay, now that I've finished that, I am bringing back my boat and it's all nice and dry. I'm going to attach it using some hot glue on this side and this side, just to the bottom of the reef. I've got this broken starfish, which I'm going to put to some use. We're going to glue it here so that it doesn't look too broken. I've just got some smaller starfish and placed them here and I'm just going to turn them over and glue them in place. I'm going to take one of these pearl beads and stick it just here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward this process because all I'm going to be pretty much doing now is taking a few things from my stash and sticking them down. Now for the final step I'm just going to be drawing on the boat, I'm going to create some waves so I'm going to do that with a pencil first and then go in with my Arteza marker. And here's the finished project, super quick and easy but it just gets you in that summer mood. So I found this old vase and then I took some twine and hot glued it and I've just carried on doing that until the whole of the vase is covered with the twine. Now you don't have to use hot glue throughout, I just used hot glue on the top bit and then I just carried on wrapping it round and then I added some more hot glue on the bottom of the vase. Then you're going to take a thicker rope, cut it into a circle and stick it with some hot glue and then you want to stick that on the center of your vase and then I cut two artificial flowers and I stuck that on the side and I also stuck down one of these little bees. I'll leave the link to the bees in the description box. Now to make the honey which is my secret trick. I use coloured hot glue sticks. I will leave this for you in the description box again. But if you don't have these coloured glue sticks you can use plain ones and then just paint it gold. And then finally you're just going to take a black sharpie pen and colour the middle part in. Now I'm going to show you how to create a Ray Dunn inspired honey pot. Again I got this from a thrift store, the lid is broken. I had to use about 4 layers of this white spray paint over it. Then I went on to google so that I can get the exact honey Ray Dunn font. And then I took some tracing paper and I went over it with a pencil. Then you're going to take your tracing paper and place it on top of your jar in the middle and then you're going to take your pencil and go over the writing again, this time a little harder so that when you remove the tracing paper, the writing has come through onto the jar. Once you can see that you have a rough outline of the font, you can then go over it with a marker pen. This is optional but I just stamped a B above the honey lettering. Then I took my honey dipper and I glued that inside the jar and glued the lid to that. 
I tied some twine onto my honey dipper and I also took one of these flowers, cut them off and glued it on. For the honey effect I'm using my hot glue sticks again so I just did that all along the side of the jar and the honey dipper. To make a larger drip effect you're going to need a foundation to build on. So I'm taking this plastic bottle and cutting a small bit off and then attaching it to my honey dipper with regular hot glue and then going over it with my honey coloured hot glue stick. And that's pretty much it, you're done with the DIY. So you can leave off and just leave it as it is or you can attach it to a candle holder for example. Here I am using a wicker basket tray that I got from the thrift store and I'm going to display it that way. So I'm putting in my honey pot and then I am taking some of these artificial flowers and then I'm putting those beside the honey pot and I'm also adding in some of my bees. So for this DIY I am taking another old thrifted vase and then I am giving it four Four layers of spray paint I did use chalk spray paint this time I am making use of an old tablecloth that I had so I'm cutting bits off and then I'm basically doing some decoupage with it so I am using some of my matte mud pudge and I'm gluing that down and then I went over it with some gloss mud pudge then you're going to need a floral foam brick and you want to take your vase, turn it around so that you can basically imprint it. You want to press it inside your foam brick so you've got the correct size. Then take your craft knife and cut that out. Take your foam brick and place it inside your vase and then cover the foam brick with some hot glue and moss. Then we're going to start making our floral arrangement. So you just want a few different bouquets. You want some pliers so that you can cut the flowers off and make sure you get some of the leaves in as well. And of course you don't have to glue anything down here. You just take each stem and press it into your foam brick. Then you want to go onto the internet and search for a bee image, print it out onto some card, cut it out and stick it with some hot glue onto some green wire. Then you want to take your wire and place it beside the flowers in the floral foam. And then I'm taking one last bee and placing that inside one of the flowers. So let's have a look at how this DIY came out. This is the final look. Today I'm going to teach you how to make some really cute miniature beach scenes in spoons. I got these spoons from the thrift store. Now you can do this using UV resin like I am in this video, but you can also use epoxy resin if that's what you have. Now if you're new to resin and you don't know what it is or how to get started, please please don't feel intimidated. It is so much more simple than it actually looks and I have made a beginner's video on this so I will link it for you. So you're going to start up by taking your sand and mixing in your resin. You can do this with a toothpick, that's what I use. And then you're going to place that in your spoon. Then once it's in your spoon you can move it around with your toothpick until you're happy and then place it inside your UV machine. So I did this for all three spoons and then I let it cure for around five minutes before I moved on to the next stage. I then took two more mason jar lids so that I can mix everything in and with one of the lids I chose to mix in some lovely pigment. Oh, I absolutely love this. Unfortunately I didn't have another one in a darker colour so I had to use acrylic paint. Pigments work way better than acrylic paint. So ideally you want two shades for your ocean and then once you've got your colours, mix it in with your resin. Then you're going to take your darker colour and pour that into your spoons so that it's at the back just after the sand. Once you've done that, put it into your machine and let it cure for five minutes again. I took some green metallic paint and I added it to the lid so whatever mixture was left I just made use of that resin and I just poured that over the existing blue part in the spoon. So I did that for all three spoons and then I placed it inside my machine and cured it for three minutes. Then I'm taking the UV resin mixture that I had made earlier with the pigment and I'm adding a layer of that over the blue layer and then inserting that in the machine just to cure for two or three minutes. This is going to be our final layer. Layer. so this is just going to make it look really natural and realistic you want to take some white powder if you don't have any you can use white acrylic paint like me and add just a small amount into the mixture that you've made already so that there's less wasted 
Then you want to pour that at the beginning of the ocean just after the sand and mix it in so it looks really natural. Then once you've done that, let it cure for two to three minutes in your machine and then you can leave off right here or if you want to, you can add some figurines. I'll link everything that I have used in the description box for you. To attach your figurines, just use a touch of UV resin onto them and then just cure that again for three minutes. And then this is optional, I just did it for extra measures really, but I just placed everything, all three spoons with everything inside into my UV machine and I cured them for 10 minutes. And then finally I added some extra detailing on the handle of the spoons using some of these tiny cute starfishes, I just added them on using hot glue. This is optional, again I will link it for you in the description box. I really don't like wasting things so if you've got any leftover resin don't throw it away think about using it so here I've added just a little extra bonus footage for you to show you what I did with mine I left it in the lid how it was and then I just added a starfish and then I popped it into my machine cured it for five minutes and then I had these magnets and so I attached them to the back of my lid using hot glue and there you go another DIY you've made out of bits you had left over so this is the completed fridge magnet. Not bad, right? Just for scraps. I think it's pretty cute. And so this is a completed project and all three spoons. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be creating a lemon gnome. So I don't have a sock, but if you do have a yellow sock, you can use that. But I'm going to be using this scarf to create the body. So I've marked it down here and along here to know how big or how tall I want my gnome to be. And so now I'm just going to cut across this material. This is my material, all cut out. And next you're going to take some stones, just so that we can weight the gnome down so he doesn't tip over. And I'm going to pull this in the centre of the material. Next you're going to use some toy stuffing. If you use rice, you're not going to need this or this. So I've just put a small lump here. And you're going to just grab your material. Again, if you're using Gasaki, you're not going to have to do any of this. And then I'm just going to tie it up here. So we've got his body all done. And now I'm going to move on to making his hat. And for his hat, I have some of this material that I got from the thrift store. And it's got lemons and flowers all over it. So I thought this would be perfect. So I'm just going to cut through this material to make a shape of a hat. And now I'm going to use this as a template for the other side of the hat. So I'm just going to cut along that. So we've got two bits exactly the same. So what you want to do is have your two bits of hat and we're going to place one on top of the other and then hot glue that down. So start by applying some hot glue on the sides of your material. And I'm just going to glue one part at a time because we are dealing with hot glue and it can get cold and then it just won't stick anymore. So I'm going to just keep doing that, aligning the two bits together and sticking them down on the side. So I finished gluing the hat together. I just carried on applying the hot glue to the sides. And now I'm just going to put my hand in here so that we can turn the hat the right way out. Go and start stuffing our hat. So again, I'm taking some of this toy stuffing and just popping that inside. Now once you're done, this is just optional, but something I like to do, and I actually forgot to add some of this in the body of the gnome, but I just take some essential oils. So this one is lemon scented, and I thought that's going to be really great to have that inside. And I'm going to apply a few drops inside the hat. Then you're going to take your hat and just pop it on top of your sock or your known body. And we're going to stick the hat on to the body using some hot glue. I also just want to add a little bit of detail, like natural creases in the hat. So I'm just going to hot glue little points together. So just apply some hot glue and then you can just pinch two bits together. So I'm starting with the sides of the hat here and you just want to press it firmly. Now we're going to do the front part. 
again just press it down and just keep working your way around until all of the hat is stuck down and secure. Now the hat is all stuck down, I'm just going to add a piece of fabric here and this is it, it's a cloth. So I am just going to cut along that and then of course I'm going to stick that down so I'm just going to apply lots of glue on this just attach it to the hat and to the gnome's body now I've got this fake lemon that I want to also add there to the side of the hat so I'm just sticking that down with some hot glue then you can cut some artificial leaves and you can stick it just beside the lemon there which I will do again with a bit of hot glue and now for the nose you can take anything you want a pom-pom ball, a wooden bead I only have a pom-pom to work with so I'm going to have to just use that so I'm going to just stick that in place going to need some of this faux fur material for the beard so I've just gone ahead and cut one out and now I'm going to stick it down with some hot glue so I'm adding some glue on the sides as well now this is optional but if you want to create some arms you're going to need some material and I've just cut one piece here, this is for one arm so I'm using it as a template for the other arm so that we can have matching arms so I'm just pressing it onto the fabric and then I'm going to cut across so that I've got two pieces that are identical and then of course we're going to hot glue these two sides together so apply your hot glue on the side of the material and then just press the two together then you go and start filling the arm just putting it inside and you can use a pencil as well to help you out so I have his two arms here completed then I am taking this material again the cloth and we are going to be making his hands out of this so again I'm just going to cut one out and then use it as a template for the other here we go, I've just cut out two pieces and then apply some hot glue on the end of the arm and then take your material and just add it on to the arm we're going to tuck this under so turn it around and then again we're just going to hot glue that and you want to just do that on the other arm and now we're going to start gluing the arms onto the body and you want to do that just on the side here where the beard is so take your hot glue again and then just press it firmly okay and now we're going to do the same to the other side now we have his two arms attached I want to just do one more thing so we're going to need to borrow Teddy's basket don't worry I can stick it back at any time if I want okay the basket is now free from the teddy bear so I'm going to get all of this Christmas stuff out now I'm going to make my own arrangement in this basket and I'm starting off with this lemon so again just add some hot glue then I'm going to take the leaf and slide it in there there's already glue there so don't need to add any there and I snipped some of this artificial, I don't know, flower? Yeah, it's a flower with some greenery. And I think I'm going to pop that in as well at the back. So let me just apply some glue there. And the basket already has some moss inside. So that's handy. And then I also snipped some of these flowers off. And I thought because of the yellow and the white, it goes really nice with this project and again I'm just adding some glue on that I think I want it to poke out this way I'm really happy with how this little basket came out now I'm going to just stick his hands onto his little basket so I think having it at different levels makes it a bit more interesting so you can have it like this if you want but 
I'm probably going to stick it one on here and one on the side there. So I'm just attaching them with hot glue as always. My hot glue comes in super handy. And here's the completed gnome. For the main piece I'm going to be using this seahorse that I thrifted and I think we can all agree that this definitely needs a makeover. So I'm going to spray paint this white and come back. But in the meantime you're going to need to create a stand for this. To do that just take some styrofoam scrap and I've also carved a small amount here just so that this seahorse can sit nicely inside. Once your seahorse is nice and dry, take some old makeup and this is a great way to add colour to something when you want it just subtle and not too strong. Once you're happy with the colour, put that aside and take your stand. I'm going to take some material, I bought this from Poundland, so you can probably find something like this in the dollar store. And all we're going to do is wrap this around the styrofoam, hot glue it. Now your stand is ready, just feel where you've made the groove earlier. And I'm just going to slice that open. This is just so that it's easier for us to hot glue the seahorse in place. Now that you have your seahorse stand made, you are ready to start decorating all around it. And to do that you're going to want some shells, some glass beads, pearls, you name it. I think I'm going to start off with some glass pebbles, so just hot glue those into place. And to add some colour and contrast, you can take some bright lime green moss like this. It also comes in other colours, so I'm going to be using a mix. And then what you want to do is create a sign. We're going to do this using a toothpick, some material and some stamps. And you're going to be able to just really easily poke this inside your material and your foam. So get your stamps ready and stamp away. I'm going to go with writing C because it's short and doesn't take up much space. Cut your material out and then take a scrap piece of cardboard and just stick that on. Now that you've finished your main structure, we're going to focus on the inside of the vase and what's surrounding the seahorse. I'm going to start with a base layer of white sand. And to decorate the inside you can do anything you want just like before but you're going to see all of the things that I include in mine. I've got some of this plastic coral and I think I'm going to spray paint this in white and then add that to the back of this creation. I'm going to add a touch of colour to this by dry painting using a sponge brush and an acrylic paint that I bought from Poundland. And now I'm just going to add this to the back of our seahorse cloche and we're done. And now all you have to do is put your base down and put your cloche on top and then just secure the lid on. And here's the finished DIY.
is the finished DIY. Grab yourself some lemons, they can be real or you can get some artificial lemons too. I will include the link for this in the description box. Okay, let's start our first DIY. Really quick, you're going to take your newspaper shredding and just fill your whole basket with that. Next, I'm going to take my lemons, open them up, just pop them into your basket. I'm also going to take my artificial ones because I don't have enough real lemons. Okay. Next, you're going to take any artificial plants just for the leaves and cut those off. And then we're just going to pop them in to the sides of our wicker basket. And just like that, your first DIY is completed. So let's go ahead and start drawing our design. So now I'm going to take my scissors and just cut that out. Now you're going to take your hot glue and apply some on the corners of the material. Do this carefully and little by little. Then you're going to grab your other part of the material and press down on the hot glue. So when you have finished applying hot glue all around the edges of your material and stuck the two sides together, you're going to leave a small amount here open, just for now, so that you can take some toy stuffing and insert that inside. Once you've stuffed your pillow as much as you'd like, take your hot glue and we're going to close the small opening that's left once you've finished you can take your scissors and tidy any of the edges and there you have it your second diy is completed you're going to need a frame so you're going to remove the frames from the acrylic sheet and all we're going to do is hot glue them in place. I've got some A4 white card from Poundland and we're going to pop this inside our printer. So I'm taking it over to my tablet because we're going to be using Google to print out some images. I've just typed in lemon vintage and select which one you want and print it out. So I've popped them into the Word document and I've made them as large as they can be and I'm printing them out. I've also typed in Lemonade Sign Vintage Illustration and I found this one. It seems to be perfect for me. So I'm also going to print this out. So I've got myself two designs and I printed two of each design and then I've got this one in the middle so all we're going to do now is just cut that out right so we have our papers all cut out I might actually need more than this I'm not sure at the moment and we're going to start arranging them in the frame and I'll show you how so I'm going to add a touch of hot glue to the areas that I want to stick down So 
So we still have too much space here so I'm going to print out a few more images and cut them out and then just stick them down exactly how I did. And here's the third and final DIY for today. So you don't have to use an old canvas like me, you can just use a canvas that you can buy that's plain already. If you are using an old canvas, then I would probably suggest to go in with some white acrylic paint just to cover everything first. So I'm going to leave this to dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to start the real work. The next thing that you're going to do is take some sand, I've got mine here, and all you're going to do is mix this up with some PVA or Mud Pudge. So it's kind of going to look a little like cement and all you're going to do is plop that on to your canvas. So of course you can pour how much sand you want, you don't have to have it in the corner, you can have it this way. And I'm going to let this dry before I go in with some decorative pieces like some shells. So we're going to move on now to the fun bit, which is the acrylic kind of pouring technique that I'm going to show you all. So to do the next part you're going to need some plastic cups or disposable cups and you're going to have three colours. First colour we're going to be using is white. So just go ahead and squeeze that into the cup there. And if this isn't enough paint, then I'm just going to add some more in later on. So you want to have a mix of glue, PVA or Mud Pudge mixed in with your acrylic paint. So I'm just going to mix it all up. Before you start your pouring, I'd recommend putting a sheet or something as a protection. So I'm using a bin bag and I'm just going to rip that so that it's larger. And then you're going to want to put something big that can hold your canvas in place. So I'm using this really big gardening cup. And then I'm taking my canvas and I'm just going to place that on top. So take your first paint cup and just pour. Now we're going to go on to our second cup and colour and I am going in with this acrylic paint that I bought from Poundland. So you want the consistency of the paint so that the paint itself isn't too much and it's mainly glue. And then you're just going to mix it up with some Mud Pudge or PVA like we did earlier and make sure you have a consistency that's quite nice and runny. And then again just start pouring. To make the waves more natural and flow in between each layer of paint, I'm using a hot air gun here. You can use a hairdryer also. So now I am just going in with my paintbrush slightly at the edges just to make it mix a little bit more and blend. Now just before the shoreline dries I'm going to go in with some glitter and just sprinkle that there. Now I'm just going to gently turn this around so that it's easy to work with. And for this project I will definitely recommend the thinner the paint the better. So this is also a thin paint, the white colour was quite thick. So again you want to just put a small amount of paint in. You sort of just want to make it like a pigment for the glue.
And now I'm just creating the marbling effect in the ocean with a paintbrush. I would also recommend some beautiful metallic paints for pieces like this, it just is so gorgeous. Just look at the colours, look at the gradients and look at the marbling effect. Isn't it just beautiful? I can't wait for this to dry. I've got the starfish here and I've added some PVA to that and I'm going to stick this little guy here. So this is how it's looking so far. I can't tell you the amount of mess that I've made, <laughs> but you make beautiful things when you make mess. The canvas has now dried enough for me to handle, but it's not fully dried. Once it is fully dried, I'm going to go in with this clear sealer spray. It's just to give it a gloss finish. And here's a finished DIY. As you can see, it's huge and it's just so beautiful. It really brings colour and life into a room. What you're going to start off with is a printout of Google. Just type in beach and select whatever picture you like and print that out. It doesn't have to be a laser printer. I actually printed this on an inkjet printer and that will work fine. Take your mirror and your printout and draw along the circumference of your mirror. Now that we have our circumference drawn, just get your scissors and cut that out. Once you've cut out your print, it will fit in nicely inside your mirror. So all you're going to do now is use some mud podge and stick that down. Now to bring out the colours more, I'm also going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge over the print. While we wait for this part to dry, we're going to start working on this side of the mirror. And to do that, I'm going to start with some sand. And this part is really easy. You're just going to take some sand and put it inside your mirror. I'm now going to take my small miniature bolts and I will leave these in the description box if you want to check them out. Just add that there. And I'm going to also take a palm tree and I'm going to cut the smaller one. I'm going to stop working at the bottom side of the mirror and start working on the top again. So you can see here what the Mud Pudge has done. It's made it look more hand painted and that's why I choose to do that. I'm also going to go in with some more detailing and take some white mixed paint just a small amount on my paintbrush here so if you want to get away with making something look like you've spent way more time doing it or that you have hand painted it yourself this is something that you can do So once you're happy with that, take your Mud Pudge Dimensional Magic. And what I'm going to do with the Mud Pudge is put it all over the C area. We're just really applying um, some depth to this and making it pop and adding some more detailing. So once you're happy with that, leave that just to dry. Make sure that you lay it flat while you're drying it so that it doesn't pour down. To finish decorating the bottom of the mirror, I'm taking these small miniature people and I'll leave the link for this as well in the description box.
So you've got quite a few, you've got some that are lying down, you have some that are sitting, you've got boys, you've got girls, there's one waving. So you're going to choose which one you want. I think I'm happy with these two. So I've just gone ahead and added some hot glue to the palm tree at the bottom and stuck that down and covered the area with sand. Now this half has dried. You can see the 3D dome effect for the water there. So I also just went in with some white paint, the one that I used before, that's ready mixed and added a small amount here and that's it. Our DIY is now completed. A magical paradise in a compact mirror. So the first thing you're going to do is go onto Google, type in starfish silhouette and choose which one you want to use. I'm going to be going for this one. You want to get yourself some adhesive paper. I got this from Poundland. They also sell these in the dollar store. So go ahead and put it against the screen. So you want it to come up so that you can trace it. Once you've traced your design, you're going to just cut that. Once you've got your shape all cut out, I'm taking this wine glass and I got this from Poundland. You can also find them, of course, in the dollar stores. Just take off the contact adhesive paper at the back. and then place it wherever you want on your wine glass. Next you're going to need a bottle of glass frosting spray and of course what you want to do is spray the entire glass and we're using this as a stencil. So I'll be back after spraying this. So I'm back now and this took two layers of the spray so once you have your layers done you're going to peel away the stencil that we've created so you can see there here is a starfish and that's nice and clear and this has got a really beautiful frosted effect so what you're going to do next is take some sand, I've got this cream white sand because I just think this is beautiful compared to the typical orange sand that you find but that is a lot cheaper. So I'm just going to pour some in this wine glass. I'm going to take this starfish, it is broken, but I'm going to place him just at the back here and you won't really be able to tell that it's kind of broken. <laughs> I'm going to be taking some more twine to just wrap around here. Now once that's complete, you're going to just take your tea light and this is a final step. Just put it in there and then just light it. And here we have our final finished first DIY. Moving on to the second DIY. And this one is super easy guys, really quick, but will look beautiful. The first thing that I'm using is some moss inside this. And I actually bought this from the pet shop and I'm just putting a small amount at the bottom there. And we just kind of want to mimic seaweed that's found naturally in the ocean. Then grab some shells and just put in however many you want. And this is just a tip of mine, I'm going to be using some alcohol and I'm going to apply a small amount in here so that the water doesn't smell and doesn't go bad when it's on display. And now all you have to do is fill this with water, so I'm going to do that and come back. 
For the final touch for this piece, we're going to add some twine around the neck of this glass. To make sure that this is extra secure in case there's any water or spillage, I'm going to be using a combination of E6000 and some of my hot glue. And just to finalise, I'm taking one last shell, adding some hot glue. And I'm just going to stick that in the centre on the twine there. And here we have the second finished DIY. Moving on, we are now on to our third and final DIY. So let's bring out these baubles. I've got this massive bauble and you can get them in different sizes. It might even be nice to mix it up and do several sizes. So I've got some small ones, I've got medium ones, I've got really big ones. And this pack here, as you can see, was from the works. These bigger ones I brought online from eBay. And I'm just going to be using one for this project just to show you how you can make this and then it's up to you how to display it and how many baubles you want to use. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make this miniature sign and I'm starting off with a yellow lollipop stick. You don't have to use yellow of course, I'm just going to cut it once you've got your desired sign and it's to the length that you think is right. Go ahead, grab a pen and just write beach on there with an arrow. Again we're going to take our trusty hot glue put a small amount on there and take your beach sign stick it in the middle next take your bauble and make sure it's the right way up matching where the hole is and again we're going to take our hot glue apply a small amount at the bottom here and stick it down to the bauble i found that a little difficult to stick down so i've just taken a small amount of this sponge here and hopefully that will make it easier to stick down onto the bauble. Now the next thing I'm doing is grabbing the same sand that I've previously used and we're going to just fill the base of this. taking some green moss here and I'm going to add just a small amount for some detail. I'm taking some small miniature shells and I'm also going to place them in there. So once you've done that you're pretty much finished. Grab your other half of your bauble and then just close it. Now again I'm going to be taking some twine just to secure the bauble and also I'm going to be hanging mine on a bit of driftwood. Again it's completely down to you how you want to present yours or display it. Then I'm taking this hanger here and generally this is for terrariums, you can buy it on its own and sometimes it does come with a little terrarium glass container so I'm just going to hang that through like this thread it through a few times just so that the bauble can actually hang in the air and then here we have the final third DIY for today first remove this label and then I'm also going to sand this memories which I started doing with some sandpaper that I also brought from Poundland. Next I'm going to take this fishing net here. I brought this off eBay so if you want the link make sure you let me know. And I'm going to just cover this using the fishing net. Now I'm going to secure that in place with some hot glue. So 
So this is how it looks now after putting the fishing net all over the box. So I actually covered this part here and then let it come down to the side and then cut it and then just hot glued it there. And then the ones on the side here I cut separately otherwise the box wouldn't be able to open. And then here and here. So I've decided just to cover the whole box and that's because I want it to look like it's been buried and there's like a whole world inside but we'll get to that later. I'm going to carry on decorating the box here so that you can have two different styles and looks and you can enjoy both. These are the items that I've chose. Some coral things and shells and just some neutral looking moss. I think that will look really beautiful on there. So plug in your glue gun and let's get started sticking all of these down. Alright, so this is how your box is going to look. I think this is just beautiful as it is really. Gorgeous. Now we're going to start working on the inside. So I want you to go onto Google or whatever search engine you use and find yourself a nice scenery that you'd like to use. Something where there's more ocean really and sky. So this is the one that I've picked and I'm going to just cut that out, measure it up to cover the board here, this part up here. So we're going to cut it, stick it down and then I'm going to apply a layer of Mud Podge all over it because it just makes it look like a painting in my opinion and it also brings the colours out and it makes it just pop so that's why I apply a layer of Mud Podge over it but that's just down to you Once you have your background all stuck down, I'm taking this small boat that I brought from eBay and I got it from China so it is really cheap and I'm going to stick that down with some hot glue because I just want to add dimension and make it more 3D. Now we have everything set. My background is stuck down and so is my boat. I'm going to work on the bottom of the box now. I'm going to take this regular orange sand and I'm going to fill the bottom with that. Now I'm going to take this cream white sand because this is a bit expensive. I didn't want to fill the whole thing with this sand. But I just want it to cover the top for aesthetic reasons. If you stick down a boat or a 3D object like me, make sure that there is plenty of space to actually close the box. So I want to make sure there is enough space here in the sand for the boat to go down. And you can make sure it looks natural by leveling it down gradually. So I've been contemplating what I want in the box here, in the sand and I was going in between miniature people, mermaids and I decided that I just wanted to look very natural like a secret deserted island and you've just got off the boat so I just wanted to put in some shells and just keeping it simple but it's down to you what you want to put in there. So here are the things I'm going to be including, just some shells, these are really small and then some neutral moss and then I've got small starfish here and then here we have the finished project I think this 
alone looks stunning just as a box and then once you open it up you have a beautiful secret getaway I really like to keep this just natural and basic and I just think it works it looks so beautiful first things first put on your disposable gloves so the chemicals don't get onto your hands this is the UV resin bottle that I'm using and I got this from China from eBay if you want the link to this make sure you let me know in the comments below get yourself some sand and I'm using this tea light holder that I brought from Wilco create a base layer using sand then mix in some UV resin Turn on your UV resin machine and then pop in your first layer under there. I'm going to cure this for around 7 minutes. Okay, let's see if that's all cured now. All good, completely solid. I'm taking a shot glass and I'm going to mix some blue dye and some UV resin to make the ocean. Now you have your mixture ready, pour it in as a second layer make sure that none of this goes to waste because it all equals money <laughs> I've left a small amount of space so I'm going to cure this then I'm going to add a small final layer of just clear UV resin Again, I'm going to cure this for around 7 minutes. So this layer is all cured now and I'm going to take the UV resin and just pour a final layer. I'm going to cure the final top layer for around 5 or 7 minutes. Now just to finish off, I'm not going to pour a layer, but what I'm going to do is just put a drop in the center just to hold my two figurines in. Turn on your UV machine again and I'm going to cure this for five minutes. And so here we have it, here is the finished UV resin miniature DIY. First thing we're going to start off with is filling this up with some soil. Next I'm taking my plant and you want to get one that sort of looks like a palm tree because we're making a beach terrarium and we're going to be repotting it in here so I'm taking the soil apart to reveal the roots then you're going to take some sand and cover this half here only so we're going to leave this side without any sand it's looking good so far and looks like a tropical island already next you want to grab some card and I've had this card for the longest time 
ever. <laughs> it's got some texture and I thought this is really perfect for looking like an ocean. I'm just going to draw against the glass as I can feel it. And then I'm going to just cut that out. The next thing that you want to do is cover your card with some hot glue. I've used this method before so if you're a subscriber you would know that this is one of the ways that I like to make my artificial water. Now you want to merge the two together and make it look a little more realistic. So we're going to put some sand over the front of the water feature. To make it more realistic we're going to take white acrylic paint and just add some to the hot glue artificial water that we've created. So I'm just going in gently and adding a little bit of white. Make sure you have a small dry brush. Don't add any water and don't add too much white paint. So if I've got a little bit too much then I just sort of dry it off on the cap. This way it will look a lot more realistic and it won't just look like white paint. It's sort of like dry brushing. Then as you get deeper into the ocean you want to make it lighter so that there's less white. So you can see I'm going bolder at the start where the shore is. And then dry paint towards the inside of the ocean. Next we're going to take some shells and add a few to the beach. I've just cut a little piece of fabric and I'm going to place that there. And I have this figurine, I've had this for so many years since I was in school and I thought it's just perfect for this right now. So I'm going to place him on top. For the final touch I'm taking these cocktail party umbrella sticks and I bought 20 for a pack and from Poundland. They're just so super cute. You remove the little elastic band. And here is the final finished DIY. I think it looks so realistic and just super cute. I'm going to line my glass base with some mud pudge to stick down some sand. Then I'm taking my sand and I've actually recently bought this from eBay. It's quite expensive but I wanted a white sand as opposed to the typical orange sand but if you want to save money then just use that because it's way cheaper. off you want to have your biggest size shell so I've got three here 
This is the smallest and that's the medium and that's the largest. So I have made a hole in the sand here so that it reveals the glass because if we were to stick it down to the sand it just won't stick. So I've made a hole and I'm going to apply some hot glue there and stick the shell down. To make it more interesting I've got flat shell that I'm going to stick onto here with some hot glue. So essentially what you're doing is creating a cascade with the shells for the waterfall. So again start off with the largest shell that you have going up to the smallest. Now we're going to start supporting the back, so you can add a big rock, I've got this which is perfect and I'm going to just place it behind there. I've also got another piece here and I'm going to add that to the back and stick it down with some hot glue. Just have a look through the shells that you have. I've just found this and I thought, gosh, that looks just so perfect here in the corner. So just improvise, look at what goes best and style it how you like. So I've got the main structure done now. Then we're going to decorate and then finally add in the water. taking my reindeer moss and this is the best type of moss to decorate with for this project they come in different colors so I might use a few but I'm starting off with this neutral color and then just poking that through the hole there then I'm taking the same reindeer moss in green adding a bit of hot glue to this just to add it to the top here again the same moss but in a lime green colour and then adding hot glue and just sticking that down there. Taking a pebble and then adding that in here. Taking some glass beads, adding some hot glue to that and just sticking that there. got these really small shells so I'm taking one of those and then adding some hot glue again and just sticking that to here taking these gemstones that I brought from Poundland and added a few to the side there and here they come in different sizes which is good and now we get to the most exciting part which is adding the artificial water so I have a tip and a trick and a secret to share with you all. I haven't seen anyone else do this yet. But did you know that there is such thing as coloured hot glue sticks? Yes, I absolutely had no clue until recently. So this makes life so much easier. If you do see anyone creating artificial waterfalls with hot glue, then typically they use the clear glue and add paint. But this is so much cheaper, quicker and easier. You just get the coloured hot glue sticks, pop them in and voila, you've got your artificial water. So my hot glue stick is inside, all of my clear glue stick is out completely. So let's begin and see how this turns out.
completely optional. I just like to go in with some white paint to mimic the moving motion and froth of the waterfall by sort of dry painting some acrylic paint onto the hot glue. So can you see how that's just brought out the dimension, it's made it pop and it's made it look more 3D and flowing and just more realistic. So that's why I love doing it, it's one of my secrets. And here we have the final finished project. I think it's so magical. We will begin by pouring the sand into the glass bottom. Next, you will cover your sand with UV resin and mix it in. Now you need to cure it for about one minute with your UV torch. Place your pearl and shells in to make your final layer. Use a toothpick or some tweezers to put everything in place. Make sure it's arranged just how you like it before you pour the UV resin in. Mix a few drops of blue food dye into your resin. Mix enough UV resin in until you've got the right shade of blue that you want. Gently pour in the resin. If things move out of place, just rearrange them with a toothpick. Use a straw to blow out any bubbles that have surfaced. Now to cure your final layer, this will take about 6 minutes. Make a small hole for your eye pin. Push your eye pin into place. If you want it to be extra secure, you can apply super glue to the bottom of the pin. And there you have it, a miniature beach in a bottle. You can keep it as a charm, or if you want to make it into a necklace, simply add the chain. I think these make gorgeous handmade gifts. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you put a layer of gravel and wash this off if it's dusty like mine. Then you can take your soil and then just put a layer of that all over the gravel. Next you want to take your cactuses and I bought these three in a pack from Ikea. I think three will fit perfectly in here but I still have to test it out. I'm choosing to repot my cactuses because the soil is just really bad quality and dry so I'm just taking apart the soil and leaving the roots. Have your three cactus in place we're going to go ahead and put our final layer of sand now you want to tidy up around your cactuses so I'm just pushing the sand down around it. You 
can also do this with a paintbrush to get in between all of the little gaps. Especially for the prickly cactus. To make it more exciting and add some detail, I'm going to create an artificial sand dune. I've created a small one here and then I'm going to add another small one here. So I've created a smaller sand dune now and I'm going to create small waves in the sand to make it more realistic as well. So I'll just grab a small amount and shape it like so. I've also created these waves in the sand here using this part of the paintbrush, just like this. I think it's certainly coming along and really does look like a mini desert. I had this camel here and literally this was the whole reason why I wanted to make this project but now he's completely out of scale so he's not going to be in the project. And instead I'm going to be using our little buddy here and placing him just in between the two sand dunes. And for the final touch I've taken this out of a potpourri packet and I thought it resembles a rattle weed and I thought it's just perfect and I'm going to be placing that here. I'm just taking my fingernail and putting some small fine lines and grooves into the sand just to make it a little rougher and more realistic. So that's all of the ideas. If you have made it to the end, congratulations and thank you so much because that was a really long video. <laughs> Let me know your favourite ideas in the comments below. Until the next video, take care and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.